gentlemen, the public hearing of uh, the Committee on Foreign Relations hereby called to order, acknowledging herewith the presence of Senator Sherwin Gachalian, um, but uh, with at least one member present, we declare a quorum, even if in the past hearing we were merely suspended. Um, now may we call on our committee secretary, the uh, attorney, Dana Alberto, to acknowledge the presence of our resource persons. Good morning, everyone. The Committee on Foreign Relations would like to acknowledge the presence of its distinguished guests, namely, from the Armed Forces of the Philippines, we have General Andres C. Centino, AFP, M. Jen Jeffrey C. Hechanova, PA. From the Department of Foreign Affairs, we have Secretary Enrique A. Manalo, And from, also from DFA, Assistant Secretary J.V. Chan Gonzaga. From the Philippine Coast Guard, we have CGRADM Nelson B. Torre. From the Department of National Defense, we have Undersecretary Carlito G. Calves Jr. From Department of Justice, we have Attorney Dennis L. Chan. And Attorney Ulysses Aguila. From the Office of the Solicitor General, we have Assistant Solicitor General Gilbert Medrano. From Ateneo School of Government, we have Rear Admiral Romel Judge Chi Ong. And we also have Dr. Melissa Loha. That would be all, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Committee Secretary. Um, it will be noted that last March 1, 2023, a public hearing on the uh, EDCA, or the Enhanced Defense Cooperation Agreement, was conducted, during which um, the committee was apprised that out of the 21 agreed-upon projects in the existing EDCA sites, the original five, only five out of 21 had actually been completed. Nine were ongoing, and the rest had been more or less abandoned for the moment with completion rates uh, being very, very low and a uh, less than 20% being actually delivered and uh, completed. Nevertheless, we were further informed publicly uh, of notice that four additional proposed sites were pending formal consultations at that time in March between the respective local government units, the Department of Foreign Affairs, and the Office of the President. The um, committee thereafter sent requests to the government agencies to provide the following documents. A copy of the signed document regarding the expansion of the original EDCA, the scope and understanding of joint patrols and their legal basis, the uh, elaboration of uh, Undisputed versus disputed waters. This was submitted by the DND in any case. Um, and uh, I believe that the DFA has uh, submitted um, something also to uh, describe that legally. The role also of the CAFGU in maritime security uh, was also mentioned. And access protocols in connection with the security of the facilities, as well as perimeter control of the bases vis-a-vis -vis the express provision under EDCA that the U.S. forces shall have unimpeded access to their material. Suggestions for proper implementation of EDCA were also made. Today's general inquiry on the uh, status of the EDCA, in accordance with the powers and jurisdiction of the Committee on Foreign Relations under Rule 10, Section 13, Paragraph 18 of the Rules of the Senate in relation to Senate Resolution Number 5, otherwise known as the Rules of Procedure Governing Inquiries in Aid of Legislation. May I request the resource persons, therefore, to use our time wisely and to comment on matters that squarely pertain on the topic being discussed, and only those topics. Let us observe proper decorum, including refraining from using derogatory remarks against other resource persons. Uh, with that, May I call once again on the Legislative Committee Secretary to administer the oaths to all our resource persons. Good morning, kindly rise and raise your right hand.
Can you repeat after me? I, the solemnly swear to tell the truth in this proceeding. Thank you. Thank you very much, Committee Secretary and Resource Persons. Um, the uh, right of uh, Senator Garcialian um, to make introductory remarks, I sh assume, have been waived. Oh, opening remarks, Madam Chair. Yes, thank you very much. We're all here to listen. And uh, with that, um, may I inquire if any of you have introductory remarks or uh, being that uh, this uh, hearing derived from a previous one, we launch into interpolations and an update. Yes, Secretary Manalo, you're recognized, please. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam Chairperson, and uh, good morning also to uh, Senator Gatchalian. I'd just like to make some very brief remarks, uh, just as a more or less a follow-up to our hearing last March. And then uh, I would uh, be turning over the floor to uh, Secretary Galvez. Uh, Madam Chair, I, um, I appear before the committee this morning to provide uh, an update on the status of the uh, Philippine-US Enhanced Defense uh, Cooperation Agreement. Uh, Madam Chair, as you recall, during the last meeting, we apprised the Honorable Committee of the role of EDCA and uh, the main objectives of the EDCA. So I will probably proceed just to the latest developments very quickly. Um, uh, since the last hearing, there, have been, there has been significant progress in eight of the remaining 16 projects in, in the five originally agreed locations. Six of those projects are estimated to be completed within 2023, including the runway project at Basa Air Base, storage facility at Mactan Air Base, and the uh, HADR, or Humanitarian and Disaster Relief Warehouse in Fort Magsaysay. I think the DND and AFP could uh, further expound on these projects. The funding for the remaining unfunded project is also expected to be awarded by September 2023. To date, the U.S. has allocated a total of over 100 million U.S. dollars to EDCA projects, including additional 18 million U.S. dollars announced during the third uh, two plus two ministerial dialogue last week in, in Washington. Uh, this would cover projects in both existing and new agreed locations. It may be recalled that earlier this month on, oath, on 3 April, uh, the president announced the four sites of additional uh, EDCA agreed locations to further uh, enhance the implementation of EDCA, as well as intensify its role in strengthening the country's defense and security, as well as humanitarian and relief operations. The four sites, the naval base Camilo Sias in Santa Ana, Cagayan, Cagayan North International Airport in Lalo, Cagayan, Camp Melchor de la Cruz in Gamu, Isabela, and Balabac Island in Palawan have been determined and evaluated by the armed forces of the Philippines as significantly relevant for Philippine defense modernization goals. Uh, Madam Chair, on the on any further information, I, I would uh, seek your permission to, to allow Secretary Galvez to make a presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Secretary Manalo. Just a quick uh, query by way of information. In um, reference to the Assistant Secretary Candolada submission, uh, it appears that a mere five of the 21 projects has been completed versus uh, your update when in you indicated eight already completed, which is the right number, please. Uh, I think the uh, what I referred to was these projects are to be completed this year. To be completed. To be completed. But in reality, those completed are still only five uh, as of uh, today, as of uh, similar to the report last March. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, Madam Chair. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, merely clarifying. Thank you. Secretary Galvez, uh, if you would like to... Uh, uh, add to the comments of Secretary Manalo, please. Uh, to the members of the Senate Committee on the Foreign Relations, chaired by the Honorable Aimee Marcos uh, Mann, to the Honorable uh, Senator Vin Gachalian, 
to all uh, uh, our guest uh, and uh, participants present in this hearing. Uh, in compliance with the you know, letter uh, sent uh, to the DND of the uh, uh, of the you know, of the Senate Committee on Foreign Relations pertaining the updates on the status and uh, completion of the rate of ETCA sites and the term of use of ETCA sites, especially for the four new sites and other matters related to ETCA, uh, our, no, our Armed Forces of the Philippines have prepared a uh, presentation for this committee. And uh, with the permission of the Honorable Chair, may we, uh, may we allow uh, our J5 to do the short presentation. It also includes uh, the, you know, the different relationships and uh, other mechanic mechanisms that really evolves on EDCA so that uh, uh, we could understand uh, the relationship of the EDCA based on the MDT and also the different you know, different uh, MDB, SCB uh, mechanisms that we are undertaking. With yes. your permission, uh, Madam, may we? Yes, uh, use it, Elvis, please. Um, we have uh, quite a few uh, items to go through. The number was simply by way of information. Um, however, we could uh, later perhaps take a look at uh, the PowerPoint. How long is it? Let me please have very, very eight, eight minutes. Sorry? Eight minutes presentation. Eight minutes. Um, okay, uh, perhaps we can go back to that a little later on. Let's uh, first establish the premises so that uh, we're a little clearer, yes, if yes, you don't mind. Yes, Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like uh, to uh, add to the information provided by both the DFA and the DND at this juncture? If uh, there are uh, no further presentations except the PowerPoint that's been held in abeyance until uh, uh, later, um, if I may uh, begin by um, asking the uh, USEC of the DND, firstly, um, you have stated that the purpose of the expanded EDCA was disaster preparedness, and uh, we are very uh, much in uh, agreement that disaster preparedness should be at the top of the list, maritime security being uh, follow, following closely thereafter, and uh, thirdly, counterterrorism. Is that correct? Yes, Madam. As we have established uh, and also uh, being uh, announced that uh, the EDCA sites uh, is really directed for our collective defense and also to, to, uh, to um, uh, implement uh, our mutual defense treaty, which is uh, anchored on the principles of uh, uh, peace and uh, development in, in the Asia Pacific region. At the same time, uh, develop our our collective defense with our allies by having moderni modernizing our alliance. Basically, the you know, the the Edka sites was selected. Uh, it is a deliberated. Uh, uh, very, you know, very. Which exercise? We're not talking about Malikatan po. We're talking about Edka lang. Yes, 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 madam. We are talking about the Edka sites. These uh, Edka sites is being. It's not the exercise sites. No, no. Sorry, Edka sites. Uh, I'm uh, not hearing properly. Ma'am, I, I believe uh, if we can really have the presentation, it is uh, really very comprehensive. Uh, we can see the uh, different, uh, the different. Uh, uh, perspective. I understand you, Sec, but at this juncture, I'd just like to lay the predicate, if yes, uh, you will allow us also. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, uh, yes, you did say that there were for uh, three fundamental reasons, and uh, uh, I think they are entirely justified. However, if uh, we look closely at our um, uh, original EDCA document, which appears to be the only one we have in hand so far, um, the uh, ultimate goal was for the uh, was merely for the modernization of the Philippine military in the long term, as well as the provision of access in order to comply with its alliance commitments in the short term for the United States. Neither of these two stated goals has since been mentioned by yourself or any of the other negotiators from the DFA regarding EDCA. I am um, a little bit confused. Have we no longer any desire to modernize the AFP? Madam, the, uh, the, you know, the design of the EDCA uh, is to promote between the Philippines and its defense treaty ally, the United States, the following. Number one is interoperability. 
Number two is the capacity building towards AEP modernization. Number three is strengthening of AEP for external defense. Number four is for our, our maritime security and maritime domain awareness. And lastly, for humanitarian assistance and disaster response. This is really... Can you want to go Article 4, Paragraph 3 ng EDCA? And uh, hindi Article 4, kundi yung mas maagang article kung saan napakaliwanag ng uh, uh, modernization. Uh, I would like this juncture uh, to recognize uh, Senator Pimentel, who is online as well. He was the former chairman of the Foreign Relations. So, um, with regard to the purpose of EDCA and modernization, um, it appears to us, um, to reiterate, that uh, in fact, modernization no longer, no longer appears to be the primordial purpose of EDCA, but instead it's disaster preparedness, maritime security, and counterterrorism. Which is it, uh, Yusek Galvez, please? Uh, in, in, uh, in really in, uh, uh, in implementing those, you know, those uh, functions, we need to modernize, madam, considering that uh, all those, you know, all those... Uh, bakit parang nakalimutan na natin, parang aasa na lang ba tayo sa mga dayuhan na ipagtanggol tayo samantalang ating sandatahan lakas ay nananatiling bulok, luma, under, uh, under um, uh, armed and uh, completely abject in the face of uh, any uh, external uh, threats. Actually, ma'am, we are, we, are, no, we are about to present our Horizon 3 to the President. The Horizon 3 speaks about uh, you know, the development of our maritime domain awareness, which is the procurement of our, you know, our, uh, our uh, uh, radar systems. Second okay. is uh, also to, to, uh, to our capability to, to respond. That's why we, uh, we are also uh, on our pipeline, uh, the, you know, the, the acquisition of the MRF, the multi role fighter. Uh, third, uh, we are also uh, have you know, the the on the pipeline on the uh, um, acquisition of the acquisition of the you know, the missile system or for you know, for anti ships, and also uh, we have also the you know, the acquisitions of the offshore vessels, which is uh, also uh, located in our Horizon Three. Uh, we have already finished the you know, the senior leaders uh, conference uh, last. Uh, you make. Uh, you said, Galvez, I'm sorry to interrupt, but uh, uh, you make reference to projects under Horizon 1, 2, and 3, all yes. of which are not referred to in EDCA, but are in fact part and parcel of the AFP modernization. What does EDCA add to the modernization effort? Uh, the modernization effort of the, the EDCA is basically for us to, to really uh, to prepare uh, to defend uh, our country collectively with our allies. And that That's also... a very general statement, Bo. I would appreciate if you could submit in um, the future, in the near future, the modernization aspect of EDCA, which uh, has not been uh, clarified to any of us in this chamber. Yes, madam. Uh, we will submit, but uh, in our protest... Kasi yung binabanggit po ninyo, puro Horizon 1, 2, 3 naman yan. Eh, alam naman natin, bayad ng Pilipino yan. Binenta nga natin yung kung ano-anong base militar dahil dyan. Uh, actually, the, 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 when during our uh, two plus two, the uh, American is already. Um, uh, um, uh, yes, I saw the uh, report rapid. following the two plus two. Pero ang sinabi lang doon, eh, magkakaroon kayo ng uh, roadmap at wala pang kaliwanagan. Samantalang yung EDCA, mukhang uh, nagkaayusan na. Tama po ba? Yes, madam. Uh, bali, ma'am, sa EDCA, we have already, they have allocated 100 uh, million dollars. It included the extension of our runways in uh, in Basa Air Base, and also um, and also the you know, the uh, uh, bilateral strategic dialogue, which is one of the pillar of the AP modernization program, also uh, supports the EDCA for its strategic basing. Basically, the EDCA projects is in, uh, included there. In is majority of the is a uh, the strategic basing of our, our yes. Kung maari lang, mabigyan kami ng uh, listahan ng modernization products na binabanggit ninyo. Pagkat uh, yung extension of runway and so on, uh, no direct bearing naman yan sa modernization, kundi infrastructure investment na long delayed, hindi po ba? Ma At makabahagi pa rin yan ng uh, uh, iba't ibang modernization plan na nananatili sa AFP. Yes, madam. Uh, it is included in our modernization program, the AP basing and also the, the doctrine development and also the acquisition and human
human resource development are all included um, in the modernization program. That's right. They're all in the modernization program and not, therefore, necessarily EDCA at all. Uh, the EDCA uh, uh, supports uh, also the demonization in, in terms of uh, majority of those are... Perhaps uh, what would be best would be for uh, you to provide us a uh, possible listing of the 100 million uh, assistance, not that it's such a large sum. After all, maybe you could let us know. Anong bahagi doon sa 100 million dollars na ibibigay ay uh, tumbok talaga sa modernization. Yes, ma'am. We will submit that. Thank you very much. Nagtataka rin ako because uh, we have been told that the four sites were chosen on the basis of um, accelerating humanitarian and disaster assistance. Di ba po? That was your uh, number one concern sa lahat ng press release. Yes, madam. Uh, I am simply curious uh, because I'm very familiar with the sites. Unang-una, bakit dalawa sa isang probinsya? Bakit dalawa sa Cagayan? Uh, number one po, yung, uh, yung, uh, yung, uh, yung disaster sa Cagayan, alam natin na madalas na bumaha dahil yan ang pinakamalaking river system sa buong Pilipinas. Uh, pero bakit dalawa? Ma'am, kasi po yung nakita natin, yung uh, Camilo Osias is basically uh, an enabal base. And then uh, yung sa kabila po, ma'am, yung sa Lalo is uh, an airport. And uh, we were able to use the, those, ano, to, to, those two bases, uh, particularly during 2009, uh, Major or no, major... Uh... All due respect, Yusek, in no listing from the UN or for any of the other uh, climate uh, authorities, is Cagayan the number one province in uh, disaster risk or vulnerability? Uh, I was... What does Cagayan have to? Uh, Mama, uh, I just uh, met with a UN uh, uh, HCR representative. I informed me that uh, out of uh, many countries uh, that uh, had been uh, had been uh, chosen for for climate change uh, mitigation, uh, the Philippines is uh, one of the four. We're aware of that, but within the Philippines, there are also provinces that have been hit by typhoons, volcanoes, and others, largely on the eastern sector, and uh, we're all fully aware of that. For example, why is Giwan Samar, which the United States used during Yolanda, not on the list? It is clearly among the hardest hit among the provinces, and yet we seem to have forgotten the military base that was utilized by the Americans during Yolanda. Bakit po hindi kasali yan? Samantalang doble-doble yung kagayan. If we look at the, you know, the uh, selections of the EDCA, uh, this is based on uh, uh, on uh, multi-use uh, uh, capability. And uh, we have seen that uh, the EDCA sites, Camille uh, uh, Osias is very strategic because it's okay. prompting. It's prompting uh, it's I agree. Yeah. Opo, uh, Yusek, yes. So it's multi-use capability, therefore. And in fact, the claim that it's for disaster preparedness is untrue. It's actually multi-use capability for something that remains unmentioned. Uh, capability uh, for what, sir? Clearly, this is no longer uh, high disaster risk and vulnerability. As I have said earlier, uh, HADR is one of the purpose of the ADCA. Uh, maybe uh, what we uh, when I said it that uh, the majority of uh, the uh, the use of the uh, the ADCA site is on HADR. But uh, the EDCA site has been designed by the Armed Forces of the Philippines and also our counterpart on many different aspects, including maritime security and also okay. the protection of our fishermen. Nabanggit na po ninyo yung maritime security, pero iisa ang nasa Palawan. Tama po ba? We have two in Palawan, madam. Dalawa na. Yes. Yung original sa five at yung ikalawa na binanggit sa additional four. Tama po ba? Yes, madam. So yun yung maritime security. Yes, madam. E paano sa kabilang sektor, bakit wala? Kasi kung uh, disaster at uh, maritime security, bakit wala tayong uh, base sa eastern sector? Uh, for, na, na, nakita ng, uh, when, we, ano, when we select yung... Ano, yung uh, wala ba tayong pakialam sa um, illegal claims, the incursions into the territory on the eastern side of the Philippines? 
wala na tayong pakialam sa iba't ibang lugar. Ma'am, ang ano po natin? Facing the Pacific. Ma'am, um, what, what we have, ano, what we have uh, uh, in mind uh, during our, our discussions on the uh, strategic development of ecocides, basically, uh, kasama rin po yun, no, yung tinatawag natin yung mga claims natin, including sa Benton okay. Heights. Okay, pero alin sa nine sites ay east-facing? Pacific okay. facing. Kasi yun ang pinaka climate vulnerable yes. at yun talaga ay may claims din, di ba? Yes, madam. Uh, in fact, ang pinaka... Eh, kaya nga. So, aling, aling kampo? Banggitin po ninyo yung east facing. Nakasama sa EDCA po. Ang ano po natin, ang ano po natin, ang uh, talagang dinedevelop po natin sa ating military basing. So, one is yung Camilo Osillas. Second is yung ano, sir, yung Pacific. Camilo Osias, please, uh, for the enlightenment of everyone, uh, Camilo Osias is located where po? In, in Santa Ana, in Santa Ana, Cagayan. And then also we are uh, developing Kasiguran. Um, I don't think either of those is east-facing. Perhaps you can mention Pacific, Isabella, Kasiguran is please. Is facing po, uh, Aurora po siya. Aurora and yes, Isabella. Yes, and also uh, we are uh, in talks with uh, 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 Governor Milo Puerte because he is offering the areas of uh, Camille Sur. Yes, but to date, they have not in any listing be considered a priority. Is that correct? Uh, they are considered a priority. Pero wala sila dun sa Siam. Hindi namin dami yan. Halos sampu yan. Wala namang wala namang region 8. Wala naman region 5. Sila naman ang talaga nakatumbok dyan. That's a future for consideration, madam. So therefore, maritime security is not so much a consideration either, even as disaster isn't. No. What about counterterrorism? Yeah. Meron ba tayong base na nabanggit na nasa BARM sa Mindanao? Meron po tayong existing po na meron tayong rotational base. Nandun sa EDCA? Uh, wala po sa EDCA, ma'am. Uh, Kaya nga. It's... Pero sabi mo, ang EDCA ay para sa disaster, maritime, and counterterrorism. Kung counterterrorism, ikaw mismo, veterano ka niyan, sigurado masasabi mo ang pinakamatindi, eh dyan sa barn pa rin. Kaya nagtataka po kami, ba't wala sa barn? Uh, sa, ganun, sa, sa, sa Mindanao po, ma'am, meron po tayo sa Lumbia. That's uh, the, ano, the uh, EDCA site. Sa... Nasa CDO yan, yan, yung Lumang Airport. Alam naman natin yan. Nakakatakot na. It's only 8 kilometers from the center of the city. Pero having said that, that's not barn. We, we have an existing, ano, kaya, kaya ma'am, hindi namin nag-ano na sa, sa barn because we have existing, uh, existing uh, uh, camp. Um, rotational basis dito po sa Buanga, which is basically strategically located. And also, we have extension uh, arrangement in Cotabato City. Manam. Okay, but all of this are outside of EDCA, hindi po ba? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes. Uh, our, our arrangement with the uh, MDBSCB. Because uh, in our uh, counterterrorism effort, uh, it is governed by MDBSCB arrangement. And no, our arrangement... We're here hearing EDCA po. So let's just stay with the topic, which is EDCA po. MDT covers a whole range of topics, as you know better than I. Yes, yes, madam. Okay, so I'm very interested uh, about uh, this because uh, the choice seems to be random and uh, no longer purposeful with regard to the modernization of the AFP, which at the end of the day is what we are all here for. Madam, we are, no, we, uh, the, the instruction of the president is for us to prepare for external defense. And with that, uh, we are trying to, no, to, to really allocate some resources and uh, our modernization program on the northern side. If you look at you know, the, you know, the configuration of the, the armed forces uh, strategy, uh, our vulnerabilities is in the north. In the north? Least, in the north I come from the north, sir. I don't feel very vulnerable. Our fishermen in Cagayan and the Ilocos Seas are not being harassed by anyone. Madam, if you look at you know, the uh, defense strategy that we will be having, if we are interested on our time, uh, maritime security, our northern part is very, very weak because considering that uh, our, no, our defense... So we have given up all claims, east sector and west sector in the uh, Philippine Seas. Is that correct? We are now obsessed with the Taiwan Straits. No, madam. Uh, we are still uh, concentrated on the uh, West Philippine Sea. 
because at the end of the, the defense These of the are West very contradictory statements, uh, you said Galvez, but I will await your submission and perhaps we can uh, move to other topics as you suggested earlier. Yes, Madam Chair. Do it just a bit. Yes, Sec Senator uh, Gachalian, please. Madam, Madam Chair, thank you very much. Um, so listening intently to the discussion. And just as a basic question, Madam Chair, uh, I also noticed some of the uh, locations. No? For example, the Bicol area, Region 5, is a calamity-prone area. We all know that's the gateway to uh, typhoons. Uh, and I noticed that uh, Region 5 is not present in terms of um, uh, the EDCA sites. So as a, as a basic question, may I ask, how are these sites chosen and what are the criteria in terms of choosing those sites? Um, just as a basic question so that the public may understand uh, what, uh, what is the thinking process in choosing the site and what are the criteria laid out in terms of choosing the sites? Basically, the, you know, the uh, um, major considerations on choosing the EDCA is the total defense of uh, the, the archipelago, uh, Mr. Senator. And uh, during our, our deliberation, normally the deliberation is being undertaken a whole year round on the MDBSCB. And uh, with that, uh, we have seen that uh, our former ECA sites are located on the inner portion of our country. And uh, looking at you know, the, the vulnerabilities, the possible vulnerabilities that we had, uh, we can see that our vulnerabilities are, are located on the uh, northeastern side in terms of maritime security. While on, uh, on, on, on uh, the, the disaster side, uh, we see that the, you know, the our no, our uh, experiences that in uh, the areas of Cagayan and also in the areas of uh, Isabella, we have uh, experiences that uh, these areas have been had been isolated during the previous typhoons that we we have experienced. Uh, in Region Five, uh, in fairness with you know, with the LGUs uh, present, uh, uh, we have you know, we have uh, a lot of uh, uh, protocols that have been fully you know, fully implemented in Region Five. In fact, uh, Region 5 has become a model in our disaster uh, relief operations. That's why when we, you know, when we uh, uh, deliberated uh, with our counterpart, uh, with the deliberations of the armed forces through J5, uh, the most, uh, the most, you know, the most uh, uh, vulnerable uh, areas in terms of maritime security, in terms of our uh, protecting uh, the, the maritime interest, included the Benham Rise, and also also the West, West Philippine Sea, we saw that uh, there is a need really for uh, for the immediate uh, immediate and uh, immediate uh, uh, designations of three sites on the north and also another no, another site on the far uh, south southeastern part of our country, which is Balaba. If you look at you know the the configurations of uh, uh, the four sites that had been you know, that had been uh, designated. Balabac and also uh, Campos Iyas is the most strategic of all the EDCA sites that we have chosen, including the five. Number one, because uh, uh, Balabac is uh, our slocks. I think uh, uh, Reid Alminar Jude, who gave us a lot of uh, uh, introductions of the slocks, uh, really uh, gave that importance. And on Camilo Osias in the law, uh, in, uh, in uh, Camilo Osias in Santa Ana, uh, Tagayan. It comprises both uh, our Benham Rice uh, claim and also uh, the northern uh, eastern part. If we will also have the Camilo Osias, we can consolidate uh, our forces for our future operations for for uh, disaster relief in Basco Batanes because we have a lot of experience that Basco Batanes has been isolated during during disasters. And if you also look at the you know, the, the that's why we you know, we put a marine uh, battalion there so that we can also occupy uh, effectively. Uh, the five one of the five uh, islands uh, far north. So in our totality on the strategy on really de defending our country, uh, the four Elka sites that we have chosen lately are we consider that these these are very strategic in terms of our detection, in terms of our uh, uh, our capability to respond. Uh, you said let me uh, dissect some of your. Um, Comments, no. Uh, first of all, uh, you mentioned earlier that it's strategic, but strategic to whom? 
which is strategic for us, strategic or for strategic us, uh, for strategic for us uh, for uh, the U.S. Because um, I, I share the sentiments of a uh, for a good chairperson that uh, if humanitarian and disaster response will be one of the core goals of uh, this agreement, then common sense will dictate that uh, the president should be located in uh, disaster-prone areas um, for purposes of quick response. No? Um, for example, uh, Region 5. And Region 5 is a perennial um, uh, area that is being hit by typhoons. Uh, admittedly, they have developed their own capability, but that's their own capability. No? And they developed that even without uh, EDCA. Uh, my point there being is this, the other LGUs can also develop their own um, disaster response capability. Uh, what am I looking at, looking for in terms of this agreement is to supplement uh, the the capability of our local government units. Even though Region 5 is highly capable, but we all know that uh, that area is really typhoon prone. No? It's, it's always hit by typhoons. Region 5, Region 8, all, all the eastern seaboard uh, provinces. So uh, again, no common sense will dictate that we should have presence there. And I, I've been there many times, it's really quite barren and, and quite isolated at, at some point. No? So we need the logistical presence. That's number one. Number two, in terms of strategy, uh, you, you said strategic. Um, if it's strategic for us, then I would assume that um, uh, the location will dictate the end goal. No? For example, if we are looking at uh, capability building. What is I want to ask, Madam Chair? What is the end goal? How do we know that we have reached a point that we are already highly capable? Uh, how do we also measure interoperability? How what 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 point do we say that we are uh, enhancing interoperability? Uh, at one at one point also, how how do we measure also the strengthening of our AFP? Because these goals will dictate, obviously, the locations. No, because the location is the the, the 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 heart, well, part of the heart and soul of this agreement. But the location really will dictate all of the activities. Eh? So, my my question is, how do we measure all of this? Number one, and then number two, at what point do we say that we have reached uh, 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 our ideal? Uh, capacity building, our ideal interoperability. You know, those are just basic questions so that we will uh, understand fully the um, end goal of this agreement. Um, good morning, uh, Your Honors. Uh, I'm General Centino, Chief of Staff. Sir, uh, in regards to the choice of uh, the location. Uh, we consider uh, a naval base, OCS, in uh, Santa Ana very strategic in the sense that we are projecting forces in the islands. We have uh, a marine uh, battalion in, in Santa Ana, Cagayan, and we have a marine company in Batanes. Uh, in the past, we didn't have any forces there. Our forces were concentrated mostly in Mindanao. And we didn't even have forces also in, Pala in uh, Palawan. We only have forces in Puerto Princesa. And that's why we are projecting forces on the south of, uh, of Palawan, a, a very strategic uh, location wherein uh, it's part of the uh, Balabag Strait. And hence, by choosing Balabag and, uh, and uh, Santa Ana, uh, where we have the naval base and the uh, forward operating base of the Air Force in these two areas, we are able to strategically deploy our forces in these areas. But uh, we all know that if that is the case, no, I again, my common sense will dictate that we should have uh, more presence in Mindanao, no? As considering that Mindanao has been quite unstable, uh, both politically and also both um, uh, cases of... Um, 
uh, terrorism there. No, so I would I would assume there the 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 sites will be uh, more uh, relevant no? in, in that in that area. Um, that's that's why I I'm, I'm looking for the end goal. No, if the end goal is to capacitate ourselves to ward off terrorism, then I would assume that the sites will be located in areas that we need to strengthen our capacity. So I'm I'm looking at the end goal. Eh? What we what we want? You know? Because that 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 question will dictate on where do we where do we host uh, those sites? Yes, your word. That's why. Uh... In the past, we have more than half of our forces in, in Mindanao. And we still do have uh, our majority of our units in Mindanao. And with uh, <clears throat> our ability to reduce the uh, internal security threat in, the, in these areas, we are, in fact, uh, deploying our Marines from the south to the northern part of the Philippines. We have the Marine Brigade in Burgos, uh, Lugos Norte to project also our forces in the islands, in, in Basco Batanes and in Itbayat, in Mabulis. Have you been to see them, General Centino? Oh, yes, ma'am. The question. I was in, uh, do yesterday you, I was in... Uh, do, do you know how they are located in Burgos y Locos Norte? It's not, hardly a camp. Yes, ma'am, because it used to be an army camp, but uh, with a, but a, a, a meager force there. Now it, we're, we're uh, projecting our forces up north, that's why we have a brigade, a marine brigade there, with a battalion in uh, Tagayan, another battalion, marine battalion also in uh, Ilocos Norte. Mr. And we have now... Uh... General, I've been to all of them. Thank yes, ma'am. No, um, just in response to um, Senator Gachalian, indeed, uh, in addition to the personnel deployment referred to by our chief of staff, the reality is that if modernization were really uh, our purpose, uh, we would locate heavily in Bataan where the National Arsenal to date makes uh, a mere, what, uh, 60, 50% of the bullets required, really basic, and uh, our shipbuilding is in dire need of restarting. If uh, capacity was indeed the uh, end goal, uh, that's perhaps where, should, where we should be going. Any case, um, I would uh, like uh, to also um, inquire I think um, in a news article last week, I'd like to address this question to Secretary Manalo. No question. Or no. Okay, Secretary Manalo, yes, uh, you stated that the government has yet to identify the terms and references of the U.S. troops' use of the new EDCA sites. However, uh, as early as February, Secretary Austin from Washington, D.C., said that you had deliberated not only on the sites, but also on the details of use. What is the truth? As of March uh, until today, we have been frantically writing letters to both the departments requesting a copy of the TOR, if any. Um, is there such a document to as an annex, an addendum, an update of the TOR? Where is this new listing of four sites found? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, yes, I, I, I confirm I did make that statement uh, last week uh, on the basis uh, on the fact that uh, really, as far as, I'm, as far as I'm aware, I've had no discussions on the terms of reference. And our understanding is when the four sites were located, uh, the terms of reference, uh, terms of reference of the sites, the use, etc. All of these still have to be discussed and agreed upon by the parties concerned, the U.S. and the Philippines. So, uh, as far as I know, we have not gone into any details. The only uh, development has been the announcement of the four new sites. So, I expect that uh, we will still have to enter into talks uh, on, on the terms of reference for the use of these new sites. To therefore deny the claim of the United States that, uh, in fact, an agreement had been reached in I'm, February. I'm not aware of an agreement on the terms of reference. I think perhaps what the Secretary of Defense meant is there may have been an understanding on the four new sites, but it, not necessarily the terms of reference. Is that contained use. in an MOU then? Is the understanding encapsulated in some document that we can peruse? Perhaps Secretary Galvez. Sir, you said Galvez, please. 
And then there is an existing standard operating procedures to outline uh, the management and utilization of facilities constructed and or improvements under EBCA. But this is still uh, being uh, being uh, being uh, uh, deliberated, and it will be and will be further enhanced. Kasi this dalawang this buwan this na po kami nag-follow up, eh wala, isa't kalahating buwan nag-follow up, kung ano yung terms of reference, hanggang ngayon, wala namang pinapaliwanag, wala namang binibigay. Uh, ano po ang pwedeng uh, ipaliwanag ninyo sa amin at uh, sa bansang Pilipino? Ma'am, ma this is the, ano, the general guidelines that uh, had been uh, uh, written on the existing standard procedures. Number one is uh, the designated areas in a limited number of AP bases will be shared and jointly used. So the specific uh, document that reflects the agreement, including the designation of four additional sites, is a guideline it is a, that is incomplete? A, it is a uh, standard operating procedure, madam, and the management and utilization of facilities constructed at a grid enhanced uh, If it's an SOP, you said, Galvez, it is not a specific document. Is that what you're saying? Yes, uh, it's a specific document, madam. Uh, it's a specific document, but it's only an SOP. An SOP, madam. It's only for procedures. Uh, basically, uh, it, it requires uh, a further legal uh, legal basis. You are therefore telling us that we are adding sites without any document in hand. This is merely a matter of understanding and some nebulous agreement made in some untold place by some unknown persons. Yes, Secretary Manalo, please. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, if I could just, uh, in Article 2, uh, Paragraph 4 of the, uh, of the uh, agreement on the uh, EDCA, uh, it states uh, in, the, in, the, in the last sentence of that paragraph, uh, and this refers to any new locations, it, it says that such agreed locations may be listed in an annex to be appended to this agreement. And therefore, yes, precisely, that, that, Secretary Manalo, we're looking for the annex. The the, uh, the addendum before they're listed, Madam Chair. Before they're listed in the annex, it would have to be subject to an exchange of notes between the the Philippines and the United States. And we're. Sabi na po niyo at uh, nasabi din na itong balikatan na nagsimula ng isang araw, e bahagi nare ni tong effort na to. Pero hanggang ngayon walang kasunduan. Yeah. Well, Madam Sir, well, ba nakakatakot na nagdadagdag at uh, nag-uumpisa tayo, nagpapaputok ng javelin at kung ano-ano pa, ngunit wala tayong kasulatan, anumang papel, anumang uh, kasunduan at pagkakaintindihan? Well, Madam Chair, as far as the, the at least the EDGA is concerned, uh, we of course would be happy to provide the annex, but any addition to that annex would have to be uh, accomplished through an exchange of notes. We're still discussing with the United States on the uh, substance of the notes. I'm confused. Like there is an annex, but it's subject to an exchange of notes, or there is no annex, which is why you have not been able to provide the committee with a copy. Which is it, Bob? Uh, Madam Chair, there is an annex to the, to the EDCA. And uh, once we have agreed on an exchange of notes, we would be adding to that annex the, the new locations. But we're still in the process of negotiating the, uh, the substance of the notes with the U.S. Once that's agreed, we will then ex have an exchange of notes, and then that will be included in the, the annex to the EDCA. And I would be happy to provide the annex as it exists now, so that whenever we agree on the exchange of notes, uh, we will have an idea of the additional sites to be included in the annex. But any annex you provide us at this point will be incomplete and uh, unverified, given that the exchange of notes logically precedes the finalization of an annex. So what is the point of a draft annex, sir? It's not a real annex. Sure. The, uh, the annex actually exists, and it includes the, the five sites. Uh, Yes, What's the original file. Original But once we agree as a, on the exchange of notes on the new sites, that will then be included in the annex as the new sites. So but, despite the many announcements, we have not agreed? Or have we agreed? We've agreed in sentiment and in principle. Is that correct? But we have not agreed in writing. Therefore, it is not binding.
Yes. The once the exchange of notes are made, then the uh, it will be uh, it will be reflected in the annex. But until those exchange of notes have not yet been uh, completed, uh, the, it will not be reflected in the existing annex. Oh, oh, syempre naman, talaga namang uh, dapat muna yung exchange, ano? Saan ka nakarinig may annex na hindi pa pinagkakasunduan, eh, naging annex ng sarili niya. Eh, hindi naman pwede yun. So the annex is no value. There is no annex for all intents and purposes until today, as far as we're concerned. As far as the four, is... as far as the four new sites are concerned, there is no written agreement contained in an annex of the EDCA. Is that correct? Yes, Madam Chair. So what is the guiding document? It appears that you're already ratcheting up activity in all these sites. You're deploying personnel. Uh, you are um, making announcements and shifting the entire national military strategy to external aggression. And yet there is no agreement to speak of. What exactly are we doing, sir? Well, um... Actually, uh, we will not be able to include uh, in an annex until we have the exchange of notes. At the moment, there are no activities in, in connection with the four new sites because those cannot begin until we have actually made the exchange of notes, agreed on them, and then included in the annex, which would uh, most likely provide the nature of the activities in the new sites. Okay, having established that there is in fact no annex, no addendum, no update, no additional amendment to the original EDCA, is it likely therefore that the terms and conditions of use of these four additional sites will be similar to those of the five original sites? Isn't that uh, logical? Are we allowed to assume na pareho lang yon? Parang tuloy-tuloy lang, sabi nga niya, addendum lang naman, idadagdag lang naman yan. So pareho lang, di ba po? Yes. Is... It's a very simple question. Um, we can assume that more or less, yung karugtong, yung dagdag na apat, more or less will be governed by the rules and guidelines and terms and conditions of the original five. More or less, makahawig lang yan kasi dagdag lang yan eh. Tama po ba? Puro sa edka lang naman yan eh. Yes, Secretary Manalo or you, Sec. Galvez, either of you. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Of course, as I said, it's still under discussion, but I think uh, you're correct. We could assume that they will be similar to the, uh, the what's existing already. Uh, of course, they'll be guided, uh, as you mentioned, by the, the main purposes as reflected in the EDCA, but uh, we could assume that uh, it will be similar to the existing sites. Yes, Chair, if, if, if I may interject. Please. Pandaan po natin, we are talking, when we are discussing now with our counterparts, the end product is an annex to EDCA. So don't even attempt to change ed terms of EDCA. Wala ganun, ha? It's, this is just an annex. Ha? Para klaro po yun. That's why we're surprised nga na medyo matagal yung sagot na dapat sagot. Yes, because we're not changing the terms of EDCA. Klaro po yun. We're making that commitment. No matter how extensive the discussions are on the four sites, there will be no attempt or desire or intention to change any word in EDCA, the agreement. Tama. Tama. The end result is an annex, okay, which is, sa mind ko, an annex, it, is to, it will be a, an extension of a list. Tama. Okay, you know, okay pa. Tama. Yun din ang, ang intindi ko, kaya ako nagtataka ba't uh, hindi kayo makasagot. Di ba more or less? Siyempre, kahawig. Hindi lang more or less. It has to absolutely comply with the main body of EDCA. Tapos dagdag lang siya na listahan na kinabit lang doon. Di ba? Ganun lang yun eh, di ba? Ganun lang kasimple yan. Okay, which brings me to Article 4, Paragraph 3 of EDCA. And this has to do with the preposition material of the U.S. forces. For the exclusive use of the U.S. with full title, and uh, with absolute control over the access and disposition of said preposition material and have the unencumbered right to remove 
and uh, place such prepositioned material at any time in the territory of the Philippines. So definitely, yung Article 4, Paragraph 3 ng EDCA will also apply to that annex whenever it is completed. Diba? Diba? More or less, diba? Kasi pareho lang eh. Dagdag lang sa listahan ng utang, diba? No, listahan kung ano man yun. Okay? So, um, my question therefore is, um, given the heightened state of tension in the Taiwan Straits and the new United States National Defense Authorization Act of 2023, are we to understand that... Uh, the United States will be allowed to store its military assets in the EDCA sites, whether north or east or west, as you have indicated, for the defense of Taiwan. It is very clear in the new law, in the new American law, that a uh, regional contingency stockpile will be established for Taiwan. Note that the term utilized is regional, not merely national, to be located in Taiwan. Are we therefore to understand that the United States will preposition said material in the new EDCA sites, at least in accordance with the provisions of the original EDCA? Article 4, paragraph 3, as read, is very, very clear cut. Hindi po kasi, ang problema, nagbago na kasi, di ba, yung mga batas. May bagong batas sa Amerika. Ito nga yung National Defense Authorization Act. Itong uh, ENDA. Na alam na alam natin, uh, hinahayaan na na magkaroon ng regional contingency stockpile para sa Taiwan. At uh, maliwanag doon na... Uh, pwede nila ilagay sa iba't ibang parte ng region. Uh, assuming uh, the alliances that are uh, now prevailing, perhaps Japan, Australia, and elsewhere. I am simply curious because an American uh, newspaper, um, by way of uh, example of said regional stockpile, uses as an example the Philippines and the uh, firing of the Javelin anti-tank weapons on April 13, 2023 in Fort Magsaysay, Philippines. So we are clearly being identified as one of the areas where this regional contingency stockpile for the defense of Taiwan will be located. Are we in agreement with that? Yes, Senator Gatilian, please. Madam Chair, may I add? Uh, I think we all, most of our constituents, including myself, fear that this agreement may lead to may lead to the Americans using our country as a staging area for their military uh, activities outside of the Philippines, so whatever that is. No? Uh, and that is actually in the minds of our people, our constituents, including ourselves. So may I ask, uh, in line with your question, may I ask uh, Yusek Galvez or Yusek Manalo that will this lead to a, uh, a, um, a, will this lead to something that the Americans, uh, this, will this, let me rephrase my question, will this lead to the Americans using our country as a staging area, as a jumping point 
for their military activities outside the purpose of EDCA and outside the purpose of the MTD. So I think that is uh, uh, a very important basic question to answer you know, because a lot of our constituents fear you know, that the Philippines might be embroiled in, um, in, in matters that does not concern us. You know? And uh, we also fear that the Philippines might be used as a jumping point for military activities outside of uh, what this agreement intends to do. So let me just uh, answer, let me just ask that basic question, Ms. Madam Chair. Secretary Manalo, please. Thank you, Madam Chair, and uh, thank you, Mr. Senator, for your, uh, uh, your statement. I think your uh, concerns, of course, are well-founded. And uh, I have always made it clear uh, whenever asked uh, about uh, EDCA, for example, that it's clearly, as far as we, uh, we are concerned, it is not aimed at any third country. It is mainly for the, for the use of the Philippines and in connection with our treaty with the United States. Uh, all I uh, would like to uh, add further is that uh, in connection with Madam Chair's uh, point made a bit earlier on paragraph 3 of Article 4, uh, I would just um, suggest that it uh, the implementation of this particular paragraph should be read in conjunction with, uh, for example, paragraph 3 of Article 1, which clearly stipulates uh, where, or would suggest where, such material, whatever other assets, uh, would be used. And that would be in conformity with the objectives laid out in, in paragraph 3 of Article 1. In other words, uh, for uh, security cooperation exercises, joint combined training, humanitarian assist assistance, and, and any other activities as may be agreed upon by the parties. So uh, whatever new activity that could arise would have to be subject to agreement by both parties. So I think uh, there's no automatic um, interpretation to this paragraph uh, under Article 4. It should be read in conjunction with the purposes of the uh, of the EDCA itself in Article 1. And uh, one of the key points there also is that it would require the consent uh, of, the, of the parties. So uh, perhaps that's what I could add to, uh, to the questions raised uh, this morning by the, the Honorable uh, Senators. Chair, just to pursue. So in Article 3, number 1, uh, there's a specific activity here, refueling of aircraft, bunkering of vessels, uh, temporary maintenance of vessels. And then in uh, Article 4, number 2, prepositioning could have, uh, no, the other one, uh, Article 4, number 1. Um, uh, you can actually store uh, materials, uh, supplies. So all of these are meant to, uh, to uh, support the interoperability purposes and also the uh, capacity building purposes of uh, our local armed forces. It's limited to that. No? Meaning when they refuel their vehicles and their aircraft, it's limited to interoperability and limited to capacity building. Not to go to another country and, and uh, participate in any military activity there. Is that, is that my understanding? Uh, is that understanding correct, Mr. Madam Chair and Secretary? Yes, sir. Uh, I have a question. Um, if, as uh, Senator Gachelian said, these exercises or these efforts or the EDCA itself should be limited solely to interoperability and capacity building. Why then are we firing Javelin anti-tank weapons with a Balikatan? Is this still to do with that? Madam, uh, we have to develop our capability on anti-armor. Is this also... Uh, you're saying that we will very shortly be producing javelin anti-tank missiles? That, that is one of the, you know, the, the, the aspiration of the Philippine Army. Well, we have many aspirations, sir, but are we actually going to do this given that we grossly um, need bullets that we cannot produce? 
Ma'am, uh, in our defense, uh, in, in our de uh, collective defense of our country, uh, we need to prepare our armed forces, including the army, on its capability on anti-armor. And anti-armor capability is one of our primordial... Uh, no, I, uh, I'm in complete agreement with you. Gabi-gabi natin napapanood ang nangyayari sa Ukraine at ang uh, matinding gamit ng javelin laban sa mga tanke ng mga Russo. Kaya lang, kung talagang interoperability, modernization, capacity building, para naman ang layo naman sa kakayahan natin sa ngayon. That, that's why, ma'am, uh, at the early stage, they are being trained because uh, we are planning to acquire the javelin. Okay. Um, Senator Pimentel? These javelins that we are planning to acquire are good for what? Uh, for the Philippine Army, for the anti armor uh, For what po? In what, what kind of warfare ba yan? To just anti-tank ito? Anti-tank, yes. So anti we're envisioning foreign invading tanks in, within Philippine territory. And yes, we, we have to. That's, know, a, that's have, the only use niya, di ba? We have to develop that, uh, uh, Your Honor, because uh, uh, the, yeah, if, we will, if we will, if we will, uh, develop our minimum deterrent capability we need part of a scenario siguro. Yes, yes, part yes, of a scenario yes, just yes. in case just in case yes. just in case there will be tanks on philippine land which we need to hit we need anti tank uh, no. but anyway that's just that's part of a scenario right? how how pero ano yan, how how uh, prioritize is that talagang top we, priority we, 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 are, we, we included that in the horizon 3 uh, your your honor pero sana po hindi lang tayo makiuso na you know nasa nasa news nakita natin sa Ukraine sikat effective ganun uh, javelin pero iba naman yata situation doon dahil ano sila connected by land po sila eh. We, we, so, we, need to, we need to develop our army capability and uh, our land capability on anti-armor. That is a basic, ano, basic requirement yes, on our capability. They agree po naman ako doon, the expo exposure to anti-armor technology, anti-armor weapons, exposure, kita natin. May naging part ng aspiration, pero is that, re is that a priority? A priority natin? Yes, sir. Uh, it's a priority for Horizon, both the Marines and uh, the Army. Uh, it is their priority. A part of defense, huh? defense, yes, yes. De 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 defense uh, frame of mind, po yun, huh? Yes, uh, Your Honor, because uh, we, you know, we believe that uh, as uh, as part of the defense, the defense in depth, after uh, we fail to uh, to maybe uh, interdict uh, by air, uh, by by sea, the last, you know, the last, you know, the last uh, defense that we had is by land, and normally, uh, in terms of uh, enemy attack. Uh, the army and the marines uh, will be uh, should be capable of anti-armor. Thank you, Yusek. But as you said, we are an island nation, an archipelago of uh, over seven thousand islands, and certainly a uh, land invasion would probably be the last uh, following an air and sea attack. In any case, I'd like to go back to uh, the original question in Article 4, Paragraph 3, allowing the U.S. to store its military assets for all we know, nandiyan na sila, for the defense of Taiwan. Kasi, talaga naman, uh, ang liwaliwanag ng provision ng EDCA, exclusive use of the U.S., full title to equipment, supplies, and material, control over access, unencumbered right to place and to remove. E, ibig sabihin, hindi natin alam kung ano naman ng ating mga base militar. Uh, tama ba yun? For all we know, the Philippines is now going to be the key stockpile of weapons for Taiwan. Um, uh, Kasi hindi like... naman natin pwedeng tignan, di ba? Ando naman sila, nakatago. Wala naman tayong access under lock and key ng Amerikano. Kahit uh, yung base militar atin, eh, kanila naman lahat ng bodegang yun, kung uh, bodega man. Paano um, natin uh, alam kung stockpile yun para dito nga sa uh, regional uh, strategic uh, contingency uh, uh, stockpile? Mama, uh, we will you know, just read that, you know, the, uh, the provisions on our agreement that all U.S. Agree, uh, all agreement with the U.S., including the NDT, BFA, and EDCA, we never meant to provide blanket clearance for any activity. Each activity, including uh, you know, the, the, the provision of supplies. Okay, but uh, Article 4 is pretty, uh, pretty all-encompassing, as I see it. As a matter of fact, baka may gamit na dyan na para sa Taiwan, di naman natin alam. Mama, we, we don't have that kind of uh, equipment that being stored as of this moment. Normally, kung makikita niyo, ma'am. Uh, How do you know? 
when uh, the unencumbered spread. access is with the Americans and not with us. The, the camp commander have all the access, uh, including you know the the areas to be you know to be uh, uh, militated with the, the U.S. Meaning uh, the, the, the 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 supplies that will be you know that will be stored to Erka should be uh, approved uh, by by the by the commander. May okay, listahan po tayo ng lahat ng gamit na nasa EDCA sites. Yes, Meron tayong listahan ng uh, gamit ng mga Amerikano? That, that's, sure agreement. that's agreement, madam. Uh, in fact, kung makita natin, ma'am, yun, no, in, in fact, yung malaking mga warehouses na pinapagawa natin sa EDCA are HIDR warehouse, including... Pwede makita yung listahan? Kasi hindi pa ako nakakita ng listahan ng, uh, ng Amerikano, eh. Ma'am, for now... Uh, Ang pag-alam ko, walang listahan, eh. Ma'am, for now, we don't have any items in the EDCA because the EDCA projects are still ongoing. But I thought you just said that five are turned over and completed an additional but, but there, there is no, no, the end of the year. They are completely empty and useless? There, it's not being used yet because uh, we, we, we would like to, uh, to complete all the projects because uh, uh, all of the projects uh, in all of these uh, EDCA sites uh, should be completed. And operationalized. And, uh, those... Kailan yun? Kailan yun? Kasi sabi ninyo by the year, by year end, may tatlo pa. Pero yung five completed na. So they're actually completed yung lima. So malamang may gamit na yun. Wala, no, wala pa po man. Wala pa. Wala pa man. Pero in the event na magkaroon ng laman, bibigyan It... tayo ng listahan. Yes, madam. Sigurado tayo. Yes, madam. Okay. At uh, alam natin ang linalaman ng lahat ng mga bodega at yes, uh, lugar doon. Yes, madam. Ta yes, uh, Senator Pimentel, please. Nag-worry nag lang din po ako doon sa sinabi po ni Yusek Galve. So, 5 plus 4, 9, gusto nyo muna kumplituhin lahat ng nakaproject sa 9 bago natin magamit kahit isa sa... Ano po yung nasabi niyo? Gusto nyo kumplituhin muna lahat bago gamitin ng completed... Uh, premises na ng isang project. Nasasayangan kasi ako, nasasayangan ako for example itong sa Basa Air Base, completed. HADR HADR warehouse. Hindi ba ito na yung sa ano? Humanitarian assistance and disaster, disaster preparedness. Tama po ba yun? May warehouse na, completed na. 1.7 million US dollars nasa Basa Air Base. To wala tayong balak gamitin yun until makompleto lahat ang sa, sa five or sa nine or sa nine is that the implication ano? of the statement no no, no sir uh, ngano natin isa sa five na no sa five na nakomplete na sa ngayon sa ngayon po wala pa po tayong items i'm talking about the items uh, correct na correct anjan na nga si sa, sa report ninyo meron ang h a d d r warehouse oh, so yan ang gusto ko, non-military pa yan. Tinulungan tayo ng treaty ally natin. Okay, and it's disaster preparedness. Ayaw pa ba nilang punuin yan? Sa ngayon po. Na mga uh, source ng supplies na kailangan sa natin. Po, sa ngayon po, ma, uh, Your Honor, nagamit na po yung, ano, yung ibang uh, facilities. Well, I'm, I'm referring po yung, ano, yung sa items na uh, tinatawag natin uh, yung yeah, nagamit so for. No? I'm, may gamit na dati, may listahan na dati, pero naubos lang. Ma'am. Or talagang hindi na gamit ever. Nalito po ka. Uh, like for instance, in Port Magsaysa, it's a it's HADR warehouse. So, building lang po yun, sir. Walang mga gamit. But it's being used. Uh, even uh, tayo ang gumamit noon, doon naka, naka park yung mga uh, uh, aircraft natin. And even uh, during uh, the calamities, doon natin ginamit for uh, the uh, paglagay uh, natin ng mga relief goods. General, yes, Port Magsaysay, yeah. sabi ng report ninyo, status of approved EDCA projects, six, completed, wala. So, anong sinasabi nyo kung completed? Wala eh. Yung sa... Project sa Port Magsaysay, six, completed, zero. So, what project are you referring to na completed na? Yung warehouse, sir. It's not even in your... It's not even the report na completed na. So, what are we talking about? I mean, na nakakalito eh. Okay, at any rate, let's, assu let's assume na completed na. Ang pag-preposition ng materialis doon for HADR, tayo or treaty ally? Treaty ally, di ba? Treaty ally is the expected uh, party to fill that up with, with the 
uh, relief uh, goods or materials. Okay. We, we can also use it, sir. I, I know, I know. We can we can use it. Pero theoretically, sila, di ba? Kasi nga, full control nga nila yan to preposition their supplies. Eh. Ba't nila ginagawa? Eh, na nagagamit natin, sir. Uh, during the one of the disaster, nagamit naman natin. Ang well oh, ginamit nyo siguro as a space to sort out materials, yes, gather kayo, and then after the disaster, napipamigay na ninyo lahat. Now, it's empty again. Okay. Assuming na full na nga siya, hindi ba part nga ng purpose niya as an HADR warehouse is for our treaty ally to preposition relevant equipment uh, supplies for disaster relief? Uh, can we not ask them to do it already? They, we can probably ask, but uh, right now, wala pa po silang gamit nun, sir. Theoretically, we can, they, we can ask them and they can use it. If yes. we are in good faith, back, yes, sir, yes, sir. Good faith, gusto na ka. They can use it. Disaster but, uh, preparedness, we want to help the Philippines, we have many supplies, we want to preposition. In good faith, pwede nang gamitin. Yes, sir. Tama, okay. Sana gamitin na. Para makita na natin na how EDCA is being implemented. Yes, sir. It's being used actually, sir. Pero yun nga, wala ang gamit doon. Because it's just a, a, a hangar kung minsan nagkagamit pag napasok natin. Nakita ko na yun eh. Ang laman, De. Pilipino pa nga na donations, di ba? Hindi, kaya tayo, hindi, kaya tayo medyo hindi lang kakaintindihan kasi una sa lahat, hindi pa siya tapos. Yes. Ginamit ang nasa mind ko warehouse. Ang sagot mo pala, hangar. So, iba. So, eh, eh, doon na lang tayo sa tapos na. Yung warehouse na tapos na, nasa report ninyo, tapos na. Nasa Article 4, pwede na nilang gamitin to preposition their supplies. Saan na na? Yes, sir. Nakikita na natin in action yung ed. Yes, sir. Na it's a, it's, and it's, it, it's for the purpose na gusto natin. It's more of the non-military type of purpose, the humanitarian assistance. Sana ganun. Uh, so, I do not know who can uh, encourage our treaty ally or treaty partner to start using it unless it is not allowed yet. Kasi na doon ako nag-worry sa statement ni Jose Galvez ka na gusto niya tapusin mo na lahat bago gamitin kahit yung tapos na. So ano sir? Is it allowed to use the, the on a per structure basis when they are finished? Yes sir. Yes, sir. Ayun, so sana magamit na po natin. Kasi pagkakalab ko meron din yata itong initial uh, lifetime eh. Itong ed ka na ito and it's about to expire next year. Next year. Siyempre, kailangan magpakitang gilas yung implementation of the agreement kasi kung wala naman napakitang gilas o epekto, why extend it? Why extend? Yes, yes. Okay, maraming salamat po. Which uh, brings me back to the statement of Secretary Manalo who reminded us that uh, the allowed activities under EDCA um, also includes the catch-all phrase, such other activities as the parties may agree upon. That's correct, right? And uh, we all appreciate the fact that both have to uh, provide consent and until such time, uh, there is no additional activity. Very simply, therefore, shall we allow the storage of material for Taiwan operations? As you see it, we talked about humanitarian operations. We are all agreed with you. We are totally with you there. Gamitin na, wag hayaan na nakatiwangwang. Now na, dalian natin. Pero, paano yung pag-iimbak ng mga weaponry, ng mga sandatahan, laban sa Taiwan? Hahayaan ba natin o hindi? Yes, uh, Secretary Manalo, since you said we can agree on additional activities, and you are absolutely right, will we agree? Thank you, uh, Madam Chairperson. If that should ever arise, that eventuality, uh, we will be guided by the, the main purposes of the EDCA, as stated in uh, those relevant paragraphs. Uh, and we would not agree to any uh, kind of activity or uh, even... Uh, materials not consistent with these agreed activities. Uh, and, and therefore, I think it would be along those lines that if there were ever proposal, we would have to find out whether it's consistent with this agreement. Also, as I mentioned, uh, our view is that EDCA is not in aimed at any third country outside. It's meant for the use of the Philippines and of course, in connection with our treaty with the United States. 
So and, we will uh, never at any point be part of what is now known as the Regency Contingency Regional Contingency Stockpile under the uh, new American law. Is that correct? Madam Chair, that, that of course is the American law. Uh, I'm not uh, completely familiar with the details of that, but as far as we're concerned, we will be guided by the uh, provisions of the ADCA and our own national interest. And uh, I think at this stage, our, our, our main foreign policy is really to be friends to all. And therefore, I think anything inconsistent with that uh, would not uh, be also uh, consistent with our position. Thank you. Thank you very much, Secretary Manalo. Of course, in the event of uh, U.S. military um, involvement in Taiwan, will we allow the U.S. air and naval assets to refuel in the EDCA sites? Will we allow them to repair assets in the various EDCA sites? Will we allow U.S. assets to be reloaded with ammunition at the EDCA sites? Consistently, we would not. Is that correct, Secretary Manalo? Uh, Madam Chairperson, if guided by the EDCA agreement, that would be correct. Yusek Galvez, what is your military understanding of the same? I will defer to the, our, our dear patient. Um, um, uh, that will be the, no, the, the position of the, the armed forces. Uh, the position of the, the DFA will be our position. Too. The DFA position is unclear. As we have said, uh, the EDCA sites is not uh, towards uh, the other country. It is basically for our own uh, defense and interoperability. Music Galvez, I know this is a difficult question, but certainly Senator Pimentel has already raised the issue that uh, we should be in the process of renegotiating EDCA if it has served its purpose. And that means the Philippine purpose in our case. Uh, are we rethinking? the provisions already for next year's renewal? And what are the terms and conditions that we had in mind? I am fully aware that uh, there is a promise of some military assistance, 100 million, which seems paltry by uh, uh, comparison to other countries. I'm also aware that the Philippines continues to own the military bases under EDCA. Uh, but for example, there is no reservation, occupancy and fee, or rental even, unlike the basis in the past. Correct. Music Galvez, please. Wala namang ukang binabayad, di ba? Dati-dati, sa Clark, sa Subic, yung mga American bases, naningil yung ama ko ng, uh, ng renta. At saka kada limang taon, magre-renegotiate. Meron ba tayong ganun? Ang nabasa ko po sa EDCA, libre sa Amerikano. Libre lahat, bayad pa natin yung tax, uh, inaabsorb lang natin, binabayaran pa natin ang kuryente, tubig, at lahat ng gastos nila. Tama po ba yun? Uh, Madam Chair, uh, the, the, the way we are implementing it right now, sir, is... Uh, uh, they, they they can use the facility for free, sir, because uh, for, for free, man, because anyway, they are the ones who funded the construction of the facility. But in terms of... Pero like, pa nga, eh, sabi mo, five out of 21. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Tapos bayad pa tayo ng bayad ng kuryente, tubig, wala pang binabayaran upa. As far as the utilities, ma'am, we are the ones paying the utilities for our own use. But if for, for the U.S. use, they will be the one to pay for their use. Ang, hindi ganun ang pagkasabi sa akin ng mga Amerikano. Sabi, binabayaran daw natin, ang babait daw natin. Okay. We're not the ones paying for their liquids. Okay. Uh, magtatanong din ako, uh, meron ba tayong uh, fuel na binibigay sa kanila? Kasi yun ang sabi nila, pinagmamalaki nga nila, ang babait daw ng Pinoy. Ah, uh, Ma'am, it's part of our existing uh, agreement as the Mutual Logistic Support Agreement. Uh, they can get fuel, but they have to pay for the fuel. Oh, sabi mo, ha? Yes, ma'am. Okay, tapos, meron din dati under the military base agreement, di ba, may binabayarang upa. Tapos lahat ng gastos nila, absorb nila. Maliwanag yun eh. Tapos ito, yung mga per diem sa uniformed officer of the day occupancy, yung non-uniformed intel officers, commerce officers, minabayaran ba yan? 
nila, pag inutusan nila, or mutual din yun, atin na yun? Uh, Ma'am, as far as we are concerned in the armed forces, we have the assistance in kind. So for juice mug personnel who are here, uh, we're, we're paying for their utilities and uh, salaries because that's included in the military assistance agreement. Pinabayaran natin yung uh, American officers. No, no ma'am. Uh, yung mga atin. Pilipino po na yung Pilipino, nila. tayo rin nagbabayad, pero ang juice mug ang nag-uutos. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma oh, so inaabsorb pa natin yung mga inuutosan nila ang Pilipino officers. Tama? Uh, so sabi mo lang eh. Uh, pinapasweldo, pinapasweldo po oh, natin tama. yung mga. Yes, pinapasweldo, yes, tama? Yes, yes, Tapos, um, may requirement ba tayo na yung pagkain, alimbawa, yung mga kasangkapan, yung mga personal use, dapat bilhin sa Pilipinas? Hindi ba ini-import halos lahat? Walang pakinabang yung komunidad? Dati yun ang dinadaing, di ba? Uh, I, I'm not aware of that. Uh, okay, sa Sambuanga, eh, mainit yan, di ba? na pinag-uusapan dati, pinag-uusapan din sa iba't ibang lugar, na imported lahat. Walang pakinabang yung mga mangisda, yung mga uh, iba't ibang uh, uh, nagtatanim. Wala namang mabenta sa mga Amerikano. So halos uh, wala silang pakinabang doon. Totoo ba yun? Okay, military vessels are usually required to pay docking charges, defense rates, di ba? In other countries, I've seen it in uh, other defense agreements. Wala naman tayong sinisingil na docking fees, di ba? Kasi mutual lahat yan. Tama? At saka, uh, wala tayong limitasyon na uh, Two weeks ago, Indonesia conducted a very large exercise similar to our Balikatan, the Garuda Shield, during which they limited the number of Americans, as I understand it, to 10,000 men uh, for a very short duration in combination with other countries, Japan, Australia, Malaysia, etc. In our case, may limitasyon ba ang uh, bilang na mga sundalong kano dito sa atin? Wala, di ba? Kasi pag tinanong mo, ang ating DND nag-iiba from 15,000, 17,000 plus. Ilan ba talaga? At dapat ba nating hayaan na libo-libo ang darating? Some of the numbers of uh, the uh, US and other allied uh, participants of the exercises depends on the agreement with the MDBSEP. Uh, it, ano, it also depends on the expansion of the different activities. And this yes, case, but from the usual 4,000, is it not correct that you yourself has, have stated that it will now be Balikatan upwards of 17,000? 17, 17,000 total uh, with 12,000 of the U.S. forces and 5,000 of uh, our forces uh, and also including 111 Australians. Okay, and that therefore um, they will be conducting 500 exercises which are more than the days in the year. That is correct? Wala bang limitasyon yung uh, ating uh, sistema? Magkikriss-cross yan, talagang uh, dalampasigan na nila yung buong Pilipinas, naparain nila. Um, is there a uh, limited maximum number of days per assignment? Yung parang 90-day visa ng ordinaryong turista? Wala. Ma Mama, so Kasi alam ko yung sa Indonesia, ang higpit-higpit, Eh tayo, pwede silang manatili rito habang buhay. Ma Madam, the, ano, the exercises is being, ano, being uh, designed uh, on the MDBSCB and also the duration of the training. So meaning uh, if the interoperability training requires uh, 15 days, the training will be 15 days with certain amount of uh, personnel. In fact, uh, we have some, ano, some, uh, some, ano, some exercises that involves Army to Army, uh, Navy to Navy, and Air Force to Air Force, and Marines to Marines. Hey, Kinatatakutan uh, lang po natin, eh, napakandalas naman yata to 500 exercises in 2023 uh, alone with 17,000 men. Um, Ma'am, the 500... Are the service not enough to raise the hackles and alarm of uh, no. the ordinary citizen? Yes, General. The, the 500 mentioned, I think, in the previous meeting by uh, the J5, it refers to the number of MDB-SAB activities done for the whole year. 
so mga meetings and uh, coordination meetings with uh, the counterparts but yung exercises naman di ba yun mingi ng uh, listahan niya yes no kasi na ako eh ayaw na mabigay eh eh natakot naman kami baka libo-libong mga kawal ang magpapaputok ng uh, anti-tank javelin kung saan-saan this uh, do not refer to the training activities itong 500 these are mtb sb activities that we regularly uh, do year in year out we will keep this in executive confidence if necessary, General, but please can we be provided a uh, copy of said list because until today we have not seen any copies uh, nor have uh, any indications been given of any limitation on foreign military personnel in Medyo our na. shores in terms of actual quantum or duration of stay. Medyo nakakaba. Uh, last but not least, since nga, sabi nga natin, i-re-renegotiate naman itong EDCA at yung iba pa, pwede naman pakiusapan. Bekenemen, sabi nga ng bagets. Bekenemen, pwede ba isingit na yung rule of law e eh, sundan kahit naka-shore leave? Pwede ba ilagay yan para mawala na yung ating laging problema dyan sa pinagagawa pag-shore uh, leave? Ma Madam, uh, I, I, I suppose uh, you know, the, that uh, provision is uh, in the BFA. BFA. Oh, pero walang, walang sinasabi doon na shore leave. Naisip ko lang. Kasi pag, uh, syempre, tulad ng sinabi mo, kinakailangan nintindihan natin ang buong konteksto ng MDT, BFA1, BFA2, ngayon yung EDCA. E mapagkakataon tayo ngayon dahil nga uh, next year may makabagong EDCA. At uh, siguro, pwede naman siguro, beke naman, sabi nga ng tao, uh, mag, uh, humingi ang Pilipino ng konting tulong. Dahil yung 100 million dollars, eh, talagang sukli lang yan kung ihahambing sa ibang lugar. Gandahan naman natin yung negosasyon natin konti. Ma ma Madam, uh, you know, 200 million dollars is uh, only the initial. 100. 200 to Naging 200 na ba? Kasi ang announcement ninyo, uh, 100. Actually, for the EDCA is uh, 100 uh, plus the additional 100. Kasi 82 plus 18 lang ang nababasa po namin. Pwede ba magkaklaruhan? Kasi there seems to be a lack of transparency and reluctance to share information. Ma'am, yung 100 po niyan is uh, intended for uh, uh, the HADR helicopters. So yung uh, three uh, black uh, yung uh, three HADR helicopters helicopters for the 100 million. And the 100 million, the initial, as a uh, uh, Secretary Austin said, this is the initial release is to one, another 100 million. So in total, it's already 200 million. Madam. So this is foreign military sales or outright assistance? Outright assistance. Uh, the FMF, uh, the, uh, the you know the medium leap helicopter. This is 100 million. And we already uh, once again he hindi po na listahan kasi hanggang ngayon hindi pa namin nakikita yan kahit ilang beses kami nasulat sa inyo. Yes, ma'am, we will uh, we will submit uh, all the, you know, the requirements of the Senate. Thank you very much. Um, I hope uh, we can iron out these things and uh, um, alam naman natin na pagkakataon nito na mabigyan ang sundalong Pilipino ng karampatang armas. At uh, sa wakas, eh, makabago naman ang ating sandahan, sandatahan lakas. Okay, um, there's very little information as well from the DND briefer as well as the DFA submissions regarding joint patrols. Um, sinabi lang, may dialogue, may planning mechanisms in place. Um, the DND doesn't define the term disputed waters, just uh, saying that disputed basta bahala na yung arbitral ruling, ganun din ang pagkaintindi ko sa DFA. Um, in the meantime, six days ago, when nabasa ko sa dyaryo, the U.S. and the Philippines have agreed to finalize plans for joint patrols. Ngayon, anong mangyayari sa joint patrols? Alam naman natin na medyo matindi ang nangyayari sa Philippine uh, boats, uh, including the unfortunate laser incident. Um, shouldn't we be very, very uh, careful and scrupulous about these joint patrols to be undertaken with the United States, which it should be observed, is a non-claimant in the West Philippine Sea. Yes, Secretary Manalo. 
thank you, Madam Chair. Maybe I could uh, begin uh, start my reply by first citing, uh, for example, the legal basis for joint patrols. These, these of course, are uh, these types of operations, patrols, uh, are consistent, first of all, our Philippine-U.S. alliance, and also under UNCLOS, military vessels and aircraft of other states have the right to freely navigate within and fly over the EEZ of countries, as long as due regard is given to the sovereign rights and the jurisdiction of the country concerned, in this case, uh, the Philippines. Uh, joint uh, patrol missions uh, have been undertaken to pursue maritime freedom of navigation and overflight, and also to uh, enhance uh, maritime uh, domain awareness. And uh, there also have been cases in the past of uh, having more than two states uh, undertake such uh, patrols. Um, it's also noted that the U.S. side has also used the term joint sales and, uh, and combined maritime activities. These appear also in the bilateral communiques we've had with the United States more recently, the 2 plus 2 joint statement. Now, um, could I just say at this stage, uh, we are um, only in the process of beginning the uh, uh, discussing the operational details, which still have to be fleshed out between our agencies and the concerned U.S. Uh, counterparts whenever uh, or if ever we undertake such patrols. And in this, uh, I mean, we still have to work out the terms of reference of these activities, uh, which I believe should identify, for example, the uh, maritime zone where they will be undertaken, the, uh, and the relevant uh, security arrangements. Uh, many of these are, of course, have, are in detail. So, uh, in other words, um, we have to begin uh, discussing uh, with the United States uh, the nature, terms of reference of these patrols, and even if we would consider including other uh, third parties, for example, just example, uh, Japan or Australia in such patrols. So uh, these still have to be discussed. And uh, we, of course, in the Philippines will be guided by the directives uh, we have, is, that is of the, the, the right of freedom of navigation and, and, the, and the need to, uh, and to ensure that these patrols are consistent with um, uh, protecting our national security. So uh, these will be the overarching points, uh, but the details, as I said, will have to be worked out, uh, not only by DFA, but of course, in conjunction with the, the other agencies who will actually be involved in such patrols should they take place. Thank you very much, Secretary Manalo. But uh, the announcements deriving from the Department of Defense would indicate that the joint patrols are about to begin. Is that a misunderstanding? Is there a timeline that uh, we are ignorant of? In yeah, Madam Chair, my talks with the United States. Uh, in my talks with the United States, uh, it was still along the lines I have just explained that we still have to work out the details. But there is an understanding in principle that uh, joint patrols and joint sales are, are definitely a possibility. Yes, uh, I saw, as I said, the transcript of the 2 plus 2 and uh, heard the term joint sale with like-minded allies and so on. Um, but is there a timeline? There's no agreed timeline, but definitely uh, we would like to begin talks uh, as soon as both sides can agree on to have So, mali ang pagkaintindi namin at ng media na paumpisa na? I think the... the in the sense that uh, the actual operations are not yet about to begin because we don't know yet the terms of reference. But the, the idea, the notion of joint patrols is already uh, more or less uh, agreed or there's an understanding that we will definitely look into them and hold them once we agree on the terms of reference. You are referring to terms of reference being absent, like the annex of the EDCA additional sites are also unavailable as yet. These terms of reference would um, refer to the UN clause or the NDT as their legal basis? I'm a little confused. The Joint Patrol derives its origin and legality from which treaty, please? As far as uh, this, our interpretation is that they are consistent uh, 
with, uh, for example, the UNCLOS uh, international law. And the UNCLOS uh, includes military patrols? The, uh, I don't think that's located in the UNCLOS, sir. The conduct of uh, such uh, patrols uh, are, are allowed because they allow freedom of not. They are essentially a. Yes, a, but they're talking about commercial and other vessels. Mm -hmm. This is clearly a military patrol. Uh, are we going to invoke the UNCLOS or is it the MDT? Let's look for a treaty, perhaps, or an executive agreement. Yeah. Anong basihan ng terms of reference niyan? Well, uh, Madam Chair, uh, under international law, as you mentioned the UNCLOS, military vessels and aircraft of other states have the right to freely navigate within and fly over their EEZ. Iba po yung navigation at yung uh, actual patrolling. Kasi military exercise yun. Yung dadaan lang, edi siyempre, uh, dadaan lang. Pasintabi lang po. Uh, yes, ma'am. That's why we would have to discuss the nature of such joint patrols. If they're, for example, if we decide to hold them within our territorial waters, that's a different story. If we decide to hold them, uh, let's say, within our EEZ, we, of course, will have to be guided by the, the, the international law and the UNCLOS. And we would have to make this clear with whomever we undertake uh, such patrols. But all I... Uh, the... Um... Delineation of the territorial waters will be another uh, long story, I presume. I don't want to prejudge, but I suppose that would come in the talks before we undertake uh, such uh, activities. The drunk patrols have no treaty basis and are merely grounded in the general rules of the interna of international law and the UNCLOS. Is this as vague as we get? Um, well, not, not only UNCLOS, as far as we understand, they would be consistent with the existing treaties with the United States. Of course, depending on, on the nature of uh, these patrols and what we eventually agree on. Are you therefore saying that uh, it's the MDT that will, the basic, that will be the basis of the terms of reference? Let's just be clear. Uh, UNCLOS, international law, the Philippine alliances. Um, can we be specific? MDT justifies joint patrols between the U.S. and the Philippines. I just want to be clear. It's the MDT, is it? Darren Paul. Yes, yes, Madam. Uh, in the matter of uh, Mam Penayan. Yes, uh, you said uh, now this. Please let's help us. Uh, please help us here. This is, I think, uh, the Supreme Court ruling that uh, in the manner of terms of activities which provide for a broad scope of engagement in the, with the U.S. may include exercises, patrols, or any other activities. Joint patrols may be covered under the ambit of the Mutual Defense Treaty as part of the individual... So, MDT po? Yes, yes, madam. Actually, ma'am... Uh, MDT ang uh, legal basis. Yes, ma'am. Uh, actually, ma'am, nagkaroon na po tayo ng joint patrols in 2014. That's correct. Yes, ma'am. So, therefore... Ang sinasabi natin, yung MDT covers the Taiwan Straits. I believe it was Senator Pimentel who said that was an, uh, uh, an inordinate yeah. stretch uh, when you cover the Taiwan Straits. In the three joint communications between China and the U.S., it repeatedly acknowledged that Taiwan is part of China. I believe we were one of uh, the very earliest nations to accede to the same one uh, China to system policy. And uh, the reason I uh, ask is because if the MDT is the starting point of the joint patrols, are we therefore saying that there is now a question about Taiwan? being a part of China. Has our position changed? Has the U.S. position changed? Yeah, it's, uh, our position that, uh, never changed, madam. Perhaps Secretary Manalo or some lawyers in the DFA can explain to us, do we no longer subscribe to the One China, Two Systems policy? Madam Chair, we... Kasi kung kasali na yung Taiwan Strait sa MDT, medyo, di ba, it's a reach? Well, uh, Madam Chair, we fully adhere to the one-China policy. 
that's that's very clear and uh, we have made that very clear at all times okay that being the case i think uh, in the same communique non interference was uh, underlined repeatedly does the mdt to your mind, encompass situations where the U.S. forces are attacked while defending a territory neither controlled, owned, or claimed by either the Philippines or the U.S. Di ba mutual defense lang ang pakay ng MDT? Does it still cover a situation where one of the parties acted unlawfully against a third state, in turn decided to retaliate if the Philippines unlawfully interfered uh, in the affairs of Vietnam, for example, Therefore, it is an unlawful act. Vietnam attacks the Philippines. Would such an incident legally oblige the U.S. to help the Philippines under the NDT? So we were attacked, diba? Paano na yun? Pero tayo nag-provoke. Okay, Pag-usapan natin, if the, uh, there's a third country, di ba? Yun ang issue dito. Yung third country, pa paano kaya? Ano yung position ng US? Ano kaya ang gagawin natin? I believe that the, you know, the uh, main principles of the NDT is all defensive. Basically, it's uh, to have a collective defense. It's not on uh, the offensive. So, meaning uh, the NDT can be invoked if we are attacked. Tama, di ba? Kasi external aggression, invasionary yes, force, these are the situations envisioned by the NDT. However, we go back to the one China policy. If indeed Taiwan is recognized as part of China, in case there's an armed conflict between Chinese forces and Taiwanese forces, how would the armed conflict be characterized by the Philippines and the US? Would it be a non international armed conflict and reduced to an internal squabble? As far as we, have, we are concerned, if there is a, an attack uh, on Taiwan uh, by the Chinese forces, our main goal is really to, you know, to really to first uh, uh, look for the, you know, for the welfare of our OFWs in Taiwan. That's our primary uh, goal. And we have uh, uh, also um, talked to our counterpart that that's our, that's our primordial concern. That's why the EDCA sites that we have uh, uh, considered uh, the, those uh, who are in the north. We considered also the tensions that we are having right now in North, North Korea. With all due respect, Yusek, I was in NOCOM a little over a month ago. They have no idea how they are going to evacuate 200,000 Filipinos in Taiwan back to the Philippines. Batanes, LGU, has no clue what to do. But that's why we are preparing, Madam. Okay. And neither does Department of Migrant Workers. As we all, all remember, Madam, there is a tension. They're embarking on all sorts of international agreements, and yet we have not um, deliberated upon the welfare of Filipino nationals in an area of escalating conflict. Actually, Madam, during 2, two plus 2, we have discussed that with the Secretary Manalo, uh, with Secretary Blinken, and also with Secretary Austin, that our primary concern in the outbreak of war in Taiwan our primary concern is to evacuate uh, the 150,000. And how shall we do that? The Navy clearly doesn't have the ships, neither does the Coast Guard. The commercial vessels are not willing that's to why, uh, be leased out. That's what why exactly the, would we the, do? the MTT uh, uh, that we are having with the U.S., uh, we will be having the, some, some sort of preparations for that. Paasa na lang po tayo sa Amerikano. We wala are, na naman yung modernization, wala na naman yung capability building, basta... Ipagdasal na lang natin. Ma'am, that's the reason why we have decided to have that EDCA so that we have that preparations from from now. Because uh, we are looking at the possibility that... Uh, Kasama po ba sa missing addendum ng EDCA, yung evacuation ng Filipino nationals in Taiwan, parang wala. 
Ma'am, kasama po yun. That's a, what, no, what, saan? Nakalagay po doon siya humanitarian assistance. Nakalagay po yung uh, ano natin na uh, when we... Saan? Uh, it's not within the ambit or from the, of the, it, the original it, 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 EDCA. It, it, Tapos ang sabi niyo, yung addendum will just include four additional sites. Walang sinabi doon tungkol evacuation of nationals in time of conflict. Mama, uh, we have stated it clearly uh, during our statement that uh, our primordial concern during the, you know, the it, 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 there is an unfortunate event on the Taiwan crisis, our primary consideration is the evacuations of 150,000 Filipinos and to absorb further other evacuations of other nationals. That's why our preparation right now is that Okay. Eh, wala na nga tayong uh, sasakyan para sa ating nationals eh. Nag-volunteer pa tayo para sa iba. Wala naman natin ng Pilipino. Senator Gachayan, please. Uh, Madam Chair, I was listening to the discussion. The, the referral to the humanitarian assistance in my interpretation is limited to the domestic uh, uh, events. No? For example, disaster response, calamities within our domestic uh, premises. Uh, but now I understand that it can also extend outside of the Philippines. Is that correct, uh, you say? So the, the EDCA and the MTD, uh, the EDCA through the MTD can now extend humanitarian assistance to Filipinos outside of the Philippine jurisdiction. Is that correct? Is that, uh, Yes, sir, because uh, during our planning, uh, we have a planning. I, I was part of the planning uh, during the, you know, the uh, conflict uh, in, you know, in uh, South, South Korea. Uh, as we have remembered before, there is a tension between North Korea and uh, South Korea that uh, we were able, we have, you know, we have a planning that uh, during the time of uh, President Aquino, that we have a, a very difficult uh, time of planning evacuating the 50,000 Filipinos in, in South Korea. And we plan to, uh, to to evacuate them through Jeju and also through Japan and then later to to Manila. And with that uh, that uh, that plan also can uh, be expanded. Edca sites can be expanded on humanitarian assistance because it is included in the you know, in the planning that uh, it included included other emergencies. Meaning it can does, be expanded. Does that mean that we can use American assets to ferry? Uh, Filipinos from Taiwan or Korea or other jurisdiction for so that that's matter. That's in our discussion, uh, your your, uh, your honors. That's, that's a possibility. Include, that's a possibility, including that uh, during uh, during uh, our disaster relief operations, we were able to use four C one thirties. But that but that's within our jurisdiction. But we're talking yes, about yes, outside yes. of the Philippine territory. Yes, yes, uh, uh, your honor. This is uh, also one of our. Possible, you know, possible uh, consultation with our counterparts. Of course, in my opinion, uh, we have to do every means to bring back home our Filipino OFWs, you know, uh, regardless of the means. But I'm just trying to uh, understand and, and appreciate that through the MTD as the, the legal document and the EDCA, which is the enabling document, that we can use American assets to bring home Filipinos from... South Korea, from Taiwan, or from other jurisdiction. That's that's uh, um, that's enshrined in the agreements that we went into. Is that correct, Ho? Yes, sir. That's why uh, during our two plus two uh, meeting uh, uh, in the U.S., we we you know we really uh, uh, intimated to them our concern, and with that, uh, I believe uh, uh, being uh, our ally, they they might consider also. Uh, that will be their, uh, our intention that uh, they will also help in really bringing uh, the 150,000 of our OFWs. That's why during the meeting we have put in the form those, those concerns. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Yusek Galvez, and I uh, put my faith in you. Uh, but to go back, uh, to the military definition of non-interference, we're very clear U.S. and China um, have both declared respect for territorial integrity and non-interference in each other's affairs, that this will constitute the fundamental basis for their relations. All through the 60s, 70s, 80s. Now, how does the DFA, DOJ, or OSG define that term, non-interference? 
Ibig sabihin, are there situations where interference through military intervention in the internal affairs of another state is permissible under international law? I think there's been the unfortunate comparison uh, of the internal affair of the Philippines, um, including conflicts in Mindanao, for example, versus what the PRC characterizes as an internal problem of Taiwan. What is our understanding, therefore, when uh, tensions do escalate, as they are now, uh, of non-interference? Anong gagawin natin? Yes, Secretary Manalo, please. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, well, the Philippines uh, fully subscribes to the principle of non-interference in the affairs of state and uh, respect for sovereignty. Uh, and that's also enshrined in the, uh, the UN Charter, which we fully subscribe to. That's why, for example, when tensions rose uh, between the United States and China over Taiwan last August, our position has always been to, to urge the parties concerned to uh, maintain uh, levels of communication to avoid uh, escalating tensions. I think that's as far as we can really go. We've talked uh, to both parties, and that has always been our message, so as to avoid any kind of escalation of tensions or, or uh, prevent incidents from escalating into uh, escalating tensions. That has been our, our policy and our approach uh, in order to observe the principle of non-interference. Yes, but Secretary Manalo, China has not been shy in expressing its anger about uh, the additional four EDCA sites directly facing the Taiwan Straits. If, therefore, um, it is um, established or even suspected that there are American armories in the EDCA sites and the Philippines attack, is attacked by China or perhaps by Taiwan, we don't know at this point. Um, if the Philippines is attacked by China, what will happen next? What will the Philippines do? What can it do? We are defenseless. What will the Americans do, therefore? What will Taiwan do? Thank you, Madam Chair. Well, of course, we hope that that uh, scenario never happens. But uh, I think uh, that's why um, we expect all countries to to, uh, to observe the principle of non-interference. And I think China so has... Non-interference pa rin tayo? Binanata na yung Pilipinas well, na bomba na tayo? Dahil nagdududa sila na sa Cagayan? na nakatago sa Isabela, nakatago sa Palawan ng kung ano-anong armamento. Well, uh, Madam Chair, if that scenario were ever to happen and we were attacked, uh, aside from trying to defend ourselves, we would also have to seek the help of our allies. And uh, one of them, of course, would be the United States because we have a mutual defense treaty, especially in Is that... Is there any assurance from uh, our treaty allies that they will come to our uh, defense? Sure, Kayo. Well, I think in that in that scenario where the Philippines is attacked, uh, what the U.S. has said is that their commitment is uh, ironclad. Okay, so that's uh, still your definition of non-interference. Are there situations where interference through military intervention in the internal affairs or what are considered the internal affairs of an independent state is there a possibility that it is permissible under some international law? Japan, for example, has spoken of uh, extended deterrence to include counter strikes. Uh, what is your thinking? Because then an attack on the Philippines could possibly be justified. I don't see where an attack on the Philippines would be justified. Uh, and I think uh, if there were ever were an attack by any country, we would have uh, to undertake uh, defensive uh, responses. And I think in the case of Japan, that's, that's the idea. 
uh, uh, at least in their new defense strategy. So I think uh, our approach would we, we don't uh, we won't start any conflict, but if we are attacked, of course we have to defend ourselves in, in the best way that we can. Thank you, Madam Chair. But we all know that uh, at this point in time, even putting up a credible self-defense posture is very, very difficult and far-fetched for the Philippines. The president has also said that EDCA sites will not be used for offensive operations. So uh, we get beyond defense or even self-defense. How does the AFP define offensive operations? Is the earlier aforementioned refueling, um, reloading, resupplying, repairing of American uh, uh, assets considered part of offensive operations? In military parlance, ma'am, an offense is when you do an actual attack. Uh, these activities that you mentioned, these are sustainment operations. Yes, so our understanding and that the EDGA sites will never be used as staging areas for an attack on a third country. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. That's very clear with what the president has said, that it will not be used uh, for any offensive actions. Is a counterattack an offensive operation? Diba? Binomba na Pilipinas. If, and well, what about the Japanese concept about the preemptive attack to prevent an impending attack, therefore a new counter-strike? A counter-attack. that is the same concept being utilized, I believe, by ANZA as well, Australia and New Zealand. I would suppose from the counter, a counter-attack is a reaction to an attack. It's a defensive operation. So it still constitutes defense. Uh, let's go back then to refueling, repairing, reloading with ammo and uh, missile stores so that they can carry out attacks on a third country. Are these offensive? Again, uh, it was mentioned by the Secretary earlier that uh, is not intended in any way to a third uh, country, a third no, party. But you're going to reload. Diban yan na nangyari nung uh, Vietnam? Yan ang problema natin sa Clark at sa Subic, tapos in-extend pa sa Cebu, sa Mactan. Di ba yun ang nangyari dyan? Yung uh, reload, refuel, lahat ginagawa sa Pilipinas. So, ibig sabihin, supply chains, they are also the third country or the second country will be justified in attacking the Philippines by that measure. Diba, general supply chain yan. Supply lines to be disrupted in the event of war. Diba yun na yun? That, that, would, be form part, that would form part if uh, we are already legally uh, engaged into such situation. No? Hindi. Magka-counter-attack nga eh. Kasi binanata na nga yung Pilipinas. Ngayon, magre-reload, magre-refuel. Oh, babalikan sila. I, I, I think a counterattack is... Offensive na yun, ha? Di no, ba? the counterattack is a defensive operation uh, initiated after uh, we are being attacked. And in the event of an attack... Here, that a counterattack uh, or a preventive uh, or a preemptive attack to prevent an impending attack is defense. Parang nalito naman ako sa iyo. How do we draw the line, sir? Na una So you makano, as stated, have an ironclad position that they will defend the Philippines. Okay, so they'll defend the Philippines. Dito sila mag re reload ng amo, mag -re repair, mag -re refuel. Babanata yung Taiwan. Offensive operation yan? O hindi? Madam, uh, I think that the scenario of uh, at, uh, Taiwan attacking us, I think, is uh, very unlikely. So that's why... Uh, Sabay are... dasal. But alam naman natin, we uh, plan for the worst and pray for the best. So let's start thinking about the worst. Yeah, that's why, that's why Madam, uh, the, the, our plan is... And not uh, repeatedly enjoin the impossibility of such an incident occurring. 
Ano nga? Kasi nga nagalit yung nagalit sila sa atin. Naglalagay tayo ng kung ano-anong armas dito sa mga EDCA sites na yan. O, binanatan ngayon ng Pilipinas. So, yung mga Amerikano, tutulungan tayo kasi hindi natin kaya. Ayun. So, they are going to launch a counter-strike, a counter-attack from the Philippines. Is that offensive? Counter-attack is uh, defensive still. Offensive, defensive? Defensive. Okay, so, if Taiwan is attacked, can the U.S. use EDCA sites to counter-attack China, considering that the counter-attack, as you said, is defensive? Uh, in the event that the U.S. Uh, requests the Philippines in uh, assistance under the ambit of the Philippine-U.S. Mutual Defense Treaty, a constitutional process shall need to be com complied with. Any request shall be subject to consideration and approval of the Philippines. So if Taiwan is attacked, can the U.S. use the EDCA sites to counterattack China? Yes or no, Lampo? Ma'am, there is a process. There's a process. Hindi, dapat yes or no kasi nagmamadali eh. Dahil uh, nagbobombahan na eh. Dapat alam natin ang sagot beforehand, di ba? Hindi. Ang problema, ang problema, defensive, offensive. Defensive, di ba? By the uh, rationale provided by General Centino. Defensive pa rin yun kasi pinatatanggol mo lang yung sarili ko, sarili mo. Pero is it your view, therefore, that the MDT covers attacks against Taiwan? Parang ganun ang mangyayari niyan. No. Is If Taiwan is attacked, can the U.S. use EDCA sites? Andito na tayo, hindi na yung Pilipinas ang naatake, yung Taiwan na ang naatak. Okay. The U.S. can use EDCA sites to counterattack China? Yes, please. Yeah. Please identify yourself. Ko Major, General, Major General has an OAM, the J5. Ah, yes, that's right. Uh, Mom, we don't have an MDT with Taiwan. What okay. we have is an MDT with the U.S. Now, the MDT, ma'am, cuts, cuts across the both our forces. So if the Philippines is attacked, then the uh, treaty obligation will apply. Wala tayong magagawa. Yes, ma'am. Taiwan was attacked. Oh, makikila ang Amerikano kasi sila talagang uh, nagtutulungan militari. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, oh, paano yun? Ang U.S. pupunta ngayon sa atin. Yes, ma'am. O kayo pinakamalapit, nakatambak ang gamit namin sa inyo. Yes, ma'am. Payag kayo na uh, babanatan natin itong uh, ah, kapitbahay nyo. Ma'am, we will have to defer to what the DFA has said a while ago that we have to interpret the EDCA site according to the provisions that was written. However, ma'am, in the event In the event that there's going to be an invocation of the treaty, if the U.S. is the one to invoke the treaty, then we have the treaty obligation to 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 help. That's how I understood the MDT. So therefore, patay tayo nyan. So ang sinasabi mo, MDT covers attacks against Taiwan. You just said that, dear. I'm sorry, ma'am. I did not... Pasabihin natin. If U.S. forces stationed in Taiwan are attacked, will that also trigger the MDT? Yes, ma'am. Sa MDT po kasi makalagay doon. Okay, ma'am. Sa natin ang Taiwan in defense of our treaty ally. Ma'am, let me qualify what I said a while ago. Nakalagay po kasi sa MDT, ma'am, if the U.S. armed forces U.S. armed forces or Philippine Armed Forces, for that matter, were attacked, then that is a condition to invoke the treaty. Condition po yun, mami, if, if, if the U.S. Armed Forces will be attacked. This is in Article 4 of the Mutual Defense Treaty that an attack on either party in the geographical area of the Pacific or on its armed forces is already a ground to invoke the treaty. But the treaty will have to go through It's constitutional processes. Nakalagay din po yun, sir, kasi hindi naman po siya, ma'am, automatic. It will have to undergo the constitutional process of the country. 
Yes, regardless, but you have triggered the process for the MDT to work and obligated the Philippines to defend the U.S. forces attack in Taiwan. Is that correct? Uh, no, ma'am. What I was trying to explain a while, what I was trying to explain a while ago, ma'am, is the provision of the MDT. How it is, how is it going to be applied, ma'am? Uh, we will, 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 you know, will, you know, will depend on our leaders. Uh, I, I cannot uh, uh, answer for that. I, I'm just trying to paraphrase what's in the article of the MDT. Parang uh, mabigat naman yan. Pag binanatan yung U.S. forces sa uh, Europe. Damay rin ang Pilipinas, pupunta tayo sa Europe, ipagtanggol yung ating treaty ally. Yun lang ang sinabi mo. O, sa Pacific area lang. O, sige, sa Pacific area. O, sa banda. <laughs> Mamili ka. That's what is contained in the MDT, man. So what, what I was trying to say was, I was just verbalizing what's inside the MDT. The interpretation of that will have to be the well the political and legal uh, interpretation but what i said was i was just paraphrasing what is in the mdt yes general Echenova, you're making me very very nervous uh because it appears that your view is that the mdt covers attacks against taiwan something that is clearly against all the communiques between china the us and the philippines on the one china policy i think that we did. I did not say, ma'am. But, but that's the I did not say that it covers Taiwan. What, what I said was I was paraphrasing. Dulo <laughs> nun, if Taiwan is attacked, the U.S. can use the EDCA sites na to counterattack China. Dahil yung counterattack is merely a defensive oh, measure. We did not say that, ma'am. Okay, so Maybe, uh, let's all think? give each other the chance to restate the position. Please. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'll try to uh, <laughs> try to answer. Uh, uh, first, on the on the hypothetical case uh, where this country uh, or this uh, area was. With all due respect, uh, given the escalating tensions in the Straits, it's getting less and less hypothetical. But please carry on, Secretary. Thank you. Uh, I understand, Madam Chair. Uh, in that case, uh, if, for example a United States asset were attacked uh, in, in that area. Uh, I believe if the U.S. tried to invoke the EDCA agreement, uh, it would be inconsistent. I don't think they would use the EDCA or they could use the EDCA because it's quite clear where uh, what purpose EDCA activities are for. But this, it could be possible that they will now invoke the MDT and no longer the EDCA. If they were to attack, in which case, if it's the MDT, then uh, I think there are a number of there are different circumstances which have to be taken into account. And I think basically, as the general uh, Echenova said, uh, if the U.S. invoked the MB MDT uh, and uh, to us, we would have to be guided by specifically Article 4 of the MDT, which, uh, as you are very familiar with, states that the parties uh, if there's an attack in the Pacific area on either of the parties, it's recognized it would be dangerous to its own peace and safety and declares it would meet the common dangers in accordance with its constitutional processes. So if the United States were to ask us, uh, we could not immediately take a decision unless we go through the constitutional processes. And I think that would mean, uh, at least at the very least, going through the Senate and our other legislative bodies to deliberate on this and to decide on what action should be taken. So those are the steps we would take. Yes, I, we I don't know the process, sir. The question is, what will we do? I don't have any procedure to get from point A to point B, you go through the legal uh, and constitutional bodies. Uh, pero covered ba ng MDT and Taiwan? Yun lang ang tanong. I think uh, Senator Pimentel very... Uh, um, Recently mentioned that in the last hearing already. No, we should study very well the MDT kung nagsis scenario building na rin naman tayo. So we have our own uh, uh, interpretation or flowcharts or plans. We can keep that secret, no? I mean, pero I'm just worried with our interpretation that we have apparently expanded the concept of parties to the MDT to include the armed forces of the party. 
Mali yun. The parties are just two. The Republic of the Philippines and the United States of America. If the armed forces of the United States in their uh, ships or uh, aircraft are attacked in the Pacific, they can invoke. But if the armed forces of the United States have, have a base in a, in a territory, not the United States, and that territory is attacked, hindi po yung attack in the United States against the United States. It so happened na matinamaan lang armed forces of the United States. So hindi po, I don't think that the MDT can be invoked by the United States of America unless that island territory is under its jurisdiction. Yan ang nakasunat doon. Sa, ano, so mag-ingat mag po tayo. Ano, let us not loosely expand uh, the coverage of the MDT. So an attack, so Taiwan, an attack on Taiwan should not and does not involve the M MDT. In case American citizens are killed in the attack or American armed forces members are killed or hurt in the attack, still, it does not involve the MDT. Ang ating obligation is to defend each other. So if, the, if our treaty ally wants to defend another territory, I do not think the present language of the NDT uh, obligates us to join our treaty ally in its desire to defend that other territory. So, mag, mag ingat po tayo. I mean, the, when we when they say parties, lalo na nung panahon na sinulat ito, ang parties no, sa under international law were states. Okay, states. Ngayon nga, nag evolve na nga. May pwede na nga. Okay, so let's, let's, let's be very, very careful. Kaya nga nagbulungan kami na kung consider natin na ang armed forces ng treaty ally natin is one of the parties. Kaya nga, in-extend namin dun sa absurd situation na na-attack yung armed forces nila sa Europe area. So, yun. So, I think that last phrase in uh, Article uh, 5 on how to interpret Article 4 means that yung attack sa armed forces nila would be in their uh, 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 vessels, in their uh, military vessels in the Pacific area. Because meron, before that phrase, merong mention an attack on an island. Eh. Uh, that island in the Pacific area must be under its jurisdiction. Okay? So, klaro yun. So, there is an attack on an island, may citizen siya ron, o may armed forces siya doon, hindi po yun. Hindi po, mag, hindi, hindi kasama MDT doon. Anyway, yeah. that's my interpretation. That's our understanding. Which I can express publicly as a senator. We must have our own interpretation, which you can keep secret, but in a, siguro in an executive session, that if you want a, an, an interpretation or the position of the admin, of the administration, you can explain to us. Okay? That's the official interpretation or position of the uh, government. Thank you very much, Senator uh, Pimentel. That's a very uh, cogent description and delineation of the MDT, an ancient document, as we well know. Um, but uh, may I take it one step further? What about the act of intercepting air and naval assets heading toward Taiwan? Will this fall within the definition of offensive operation? Or will this fall outside the purview of such term? Since, again, this would appear to be a defensive action. Madam, Kasi yung armed forces everywhere. Ma Siyempre, hindi pwede yun, ano? Madam, can we request yes, for... Yes, Josef Galvez, please. For uh, an executive session for the discussion of this because this is very sensitive already. Yes, uh, uh, we understand. And uh, it's just a question, however, that's being asked in universities today, in the media, and being aired by uh, many, many fora. Um, intercepting air and naval assets going to Taiwan. Is Madam, this offensive or defensive? Yun lang. Oh, wala mo na yung Pilipinas. Madam, we, uh, we really wanted to have uh, some sort of a uh, realistic discussion uh, in the executive session, Madam. Okay. Uh, iwan muna natin sa sirit ang sagot ng mga tanong. Kung ganon, in the meantime, um, let me just bring up if uh, kaya pa ng ating mga members. Eh, the AFP spokesman, Colonel Laguilar, admitted that aside from disaster response, the EDCA sites may be used jointly by the U.S. and the Philippines for emergencies. 
What are the emergencies contemplated exactly by the AFP? Emergency na ba yun? Yung uh, intercepting uh, other countries' air and naval assets with whom we have a treaty agreement? Uh, yes, ma'am, uh, for humanitarian assistance. That's, this, these are emergencies that may arise. Uh, like, for oh. instance, we were discussing about a, a scenario that may happen in a country and the, we need to repatriate our, uh, our nationals. Then these uh, locations can be used for uh, the repatriation. So you are saying, not, General, not necessarily the emergencies referred to by uh, your spokesman are clearly humanitarian or disaster emergencies, period. Wala na pong iba. Wala nang counter-strike, wala nang defensive counter-attack, wala nang extended deterrence, wala nang lahat yun. Basta disaster lang. Disaster or human-induced disasters, so like what's happening if there's a an outbreak of uh, uh, war that may happen in, in other countries and we need to repatriate. So humanitarian lang. Yun lang yung emergency, ha? wala nang ibang emergency. Kahit, uh, yun nga, yung nabomba yung Pilipinas, yung EDCA site sa Pilipinas nabomba. Hindi kasama yon sa emergency na tinutukoy ng ating spokesman. Uh, yes, no. Kasama o hindi? Yes, kasama or no, hindi? These are the emergencies that you're referring to, like uh, in the event of humanitarian assistance. Hindi kasama doon ha, yung uh, counter-attack, yung uh, defensive o offensive na hindi tayo uh, maliwanag. Uh, ganun ba yun? We refer to the EDCA locations. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, um, are the just to pursue that uh, line of questioning, uh, I just want to ask uh, Yusa Galvez or uh, the DFA if they have already outline a contingency plan uh, for our OFWs in critical areas, no? um, whether it's Taiwan, so, uh, North, uh, South Korea, or others. Uh, this, these issues are becoming quite, uh, um, quite uh, contentious nowadays. No? And, uh, and I heard earlier that uh, the agreement can be it interpreted in a way that the humanitarian assistance can extend outside of the Philippines. So that being the case, no, uh, have we already outlined whether with, with, with Americans or with our own selves a contingency plan on uh, bringing back home OFWs from uh, areas that are uh, critical? Yes, sir. In fact, uh, yung uh, lahat po natin na mga tinatawag natin yung defense attaches have already had uh, that kind of arrangement with our uh, 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 Philippine uh, Philippine uh, country team. In fact, uh, during the the you know, the the crisis in uh, Korea uh, during the Aquino uh, Aquino administration, we were able to enhance that planning purposes, and we were able to plan for the evacuation of uh, our OFW fifty thousand OFW. Uh, in South Korea. And also in this case, we are really uh, planning uh, for contingencies, for emergencies, just in case there will be a breakout of a uh, of, uh, of, uh, conflict, heightened conflict on uh, the different plus points uh, that we have identified. And with that, uh, we are discussing uh, to our counterpart that the possible use of uh, our EDCA sites and other uh, possible areas that may be used for humanitarian uh, evacuations of uh, mass uh, evacuations of uh, Filipinos and even other you know, other nationals. In fact, uh, I have you know, I have discussions already with the with the UN uh, uh, country representative on the possible uh, uh, possible uh, ways on having that kind of uh, preparation. So we term it uh, your your you know, your honor non you know, non 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 combat or neo uh, neo operations. Non combat, non, non combat evacuations. But operations. that's already in place. Yes, yes, uh, your, your, okay. your honor. Yes, your honor. All right. 
And ma'am, on a on a on a separate note, no, for 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 the implementation of EDCA, how much budget are we looking at? No? Um, of course, we'll be doing balikatan exercises. I'm assuming we're expanding it, no, because we're expanding expanded the sites. Uh, what? Uh, how much budget are we looking at no, to fully uh, maximize uh, the agreement? Uh, for 2023 and possible for 2024, do we have for 2023? They have already uh, uh, the US already have uh, no, have uh, already. Uh, how about on our side? Uh, well, on our side, sir, uh, we are on the, on the planning. How much? How much do we, do we have any figure already? Uh, we have, we have, well, 2023 to matakbuna, no. So I'm sure that's part of your appropriations. But yeah. I'm just I just want to put on record and uh, have an idea how much the government is spending, no, to uh, to to operationalize EDCA, sir. We will still have the discussion with uh, with uh, concerned agencies on uh, the possible uh, planning of the expansion of the you know the the EDCA, EDCA project. For now, uh, what we have identified is uh, the different projects being funded by uh, the US. Yeah, but ongoing na in Balikatan, di ba? Uh, I saw it on TV. So yes, I, yes, I would, yes, sir. Uh, the Balikatan will uh, be, be be completed. Uh, it started already uh, last April 11, and also it will be completed on uh, April 20. And we will have succeeding exercises throughout the year. Uh, the, 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 you know, the, there will be a continuing planning for the next year. Okay. So the the iteration of the uh, Balikatan exercises will be on uh, another uh, month of April. Yeah, my, my chain of thought there, uh, uh, Usek is. Uh, uh, is this cost efficient for us? No, um, because what 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 I understand from EDCA is the capacity building um, is in the form of uh, working together no, with the Americans. No, and because of that, I am assuming that we are saving many uh, things. No, for example, training. It, for example, if we get a if we pay a trainer, then we have to. Pay that, but in this particular case, it's part of the exercise. So we're saving a lot, no. So what I'm driving at is, how much is the government paying, vis-a-vis -vis how much the government would have paid, no, uh, if we do this on our own, no. Uh, that's what I'm driving at. I'm, I want to uh, see whether this type of of um, activity is cost efficient for us. No, I am assuming it it is, no. And uh, I'm assuming also that it's also uh, medium term and long term looking uh, forward looking you know, because uh, the interoperability will be running for a long time. So just submit to us along you said the budget budgetary requirements uh, to operationalize uh, EDCA on the Philippine side. No, in American side, nakita ko meron na, but Philippine side lang. And then second also, just submit to us, Yusek. Uh, I mentioned this earlier. What is the end goal? No? How do we measure interoperability? How do we measure capacity building? Uh, do we, do, for example, on interoperability, I assume, I'm assuming this is in line with the MTD, you know, because how do you defend ourselves if we cannot interoperate? But how, what is the gauge that we have ready interoperability with the American Armed Forces? No, so um, just submit to us later on some form of um, a gauge or measure whether the, all of these things are being achieved. No, again, uh, I just want to look at how far are we in terms of achieving the goals of uh, this agreement. If you don't have the answer now, you can just submit it to the committee later on. Uh, on the funding, sir, we will uh, submit, uh, considering that uh, we are in the process of uh, uh, really looking at uh, the expense of uh, the expenditures that we will be having on having a, a co-used uh, facility with the EDCA. Uh, secondly, uh, the, you know, the, uh, the experience of our soldiers uh, training with the Americans is very, you know, uh, it's also life-saving, considering that uh, during the Barrio Takatan iteration, it's also developed our, our forces. Not individually, but also in, uh, organizationally. I will cite an example wherein uh, during the, our earlier Balikatan, we were trained the first LRC, LRC, like the reaction company. Uh, and you, and we, we look at that uh, when we, when the, when the Delta Force uh, trained our our LRC, first LRC, they equipped them, they trained them. Uh, they, you know, they uh, 
uh, they you know they uh, uh, they you know they uh, they facilitated the construction of the MAC uh, buildings and also uh, they 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 put into power uh, the you know the modernization of these uh, LRCs and if you will see the impact of that LRC the LRC are the, the most uh, one of uh, the most elite and also including the Marines the first recon and also the SEAL team these are the elite of the elites and uh, they they were used during the Marawi siege and uh, if you look at you know the the you know, the, uh, the 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 value of the training that we had during Balikatan, it is uh, some sort of immeasurable considering that uh, uh, the value of the training, uh, the uh, the training of the our soldiers, uh, also including with the Australians, it it, it really you know, it really uh, gave them the confidence uh, to really fight and win uh, wars. Uh, for example, in in you know, in uh, in the different divisions in Mindanao. Where they were trained for counterterrorism, our Australian and uh, American forces were able to train each of the divisions, and uh, the capability that we have uh, uh, we have achieved from that training, and the parity of the you know the the uh, the you know, the uh, the process that they have, including the leadership and also the small leadership training, uh, it greatly uh, affected our operational uh, operational efficiency. And uh, if you look now, uh, uh, sinasabi nga po ni Chief of Staff, nung, nung, nung dati po, na nag na, nung nabataan po po namin, nung balikatan, uh, nakita namin po yung, ano, yung ating army po, uh, ragtag army, karimaki, nakita natin may mga kaldero pa yung iba, nung panahon namin. Pero ngayon, nakikita namin tuwa kami kasi yung equipment ng, ano, ng ating armed forces at saka equipment po ng, ano, ng ating uh, uh, counterpart, nakita namin in uniform na pagka nakita po namin na talagang at par na po yung ano natin. And uh, I believe if we're able to, no, to uh, if, if we're able to, no, to, to see yung, uh, yung, ano, yung parang uh, development of the armed forces right now, hindi na po natin ma 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 ano, ma 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 Nung parang po kami, kami kasama sa ano, kalde-kaldero namin, talagang parang ragtag kami. Ngayon, nakita namin po, ngayon, awa ng Diyos po, medyo at par na po tayo. Yusek, I just, uh, just a suggestion. No? And, uh, of course, all of these are anecdotal, uh, and we're very, very happy to hear all of these improvements. But uh, what I suggest is to just come up with uh, some some measure, no? because I was telling our chairperson is, uh, it's also good to see where we are going, how far are we, like, for example, simple things like how many soldiers trained, how many equipment uh, were given, just to give us an idea na malayo na pala narating natin. Ano? Of course, all of these are anecdotal and we welcome that. But uh, it's go good also to give us uh, uh, a measure no, on how far are we you know, so that we will know uh, how, what else can we do no, in order to make this successful, whether through budget-wise or through other means. But uh, a, a measure would be a good good uh, uh, gauge for us to look at. So we will submit, sir, uh, the, you know, the iterations of our training with uh, our uh, ally, uh, especially with the U.S., and we will see from the 2000 up to now, we will see a big difference, especially the, you know, the development of our human resource. And now we are so happy also that uh, we are uh, when we are also having some sort of uh, airports to airports, at least meron po tayong jet na nakakasabay po sa kanila. And maybe in the near future, if the Senate will allow us to have the MRF, we will be happy to have a side-by-side -side training with them, with our modern uh, multi-role fighter. Okay, thank you. We'd like to recognize Secretary uh, Paco Pimentel, uh, very who, like me, is uh, very pleased that we have achieved culinary equity with our treaty partners. Yes, uh, maganda rin yung gano'n kasi we are happy with the small things. So, importante, tapos, you know, it, it adds, uh, you know, dignity or the, to improve the morale of our personnel, di ba? Okay po yun. Uh, I'll pursue the point of uh, Senator Gachalian, uh, just an additional input for consistency sake, para kalaro po tayo. Sabi natin kasi as the rationale for the additional EDCA locations, for the naval base Camilo Osias in Santa Ana, Cagayan, and for the uh, Philippine Air Force Forward Operating Base Lalo Airport in Cagayan. One of the rationales, sabi natin, possible evacuation area in case of uh, conflict 
possible conflict in North Korean Peninsula and Taiwan. Okay. Then, so yung dalawa, yung justification, then the possible, uh, then the proposed projects in the two. Sana, mer gives us a hint na gagamitin siya talaga sa possible evocation. Sa, sa forward operating base in Lalo Airport, wala ko nakikita na connected doon. In Naval Base Camilo Sia Santa Ana Cagayan, I can see two construction of bilateral multi-use facility and mess hall and construction of additional billeting facilities. Yun na yung closest doon. But of course, sana, if we can ask our treaty partners to also invest in mag-barracks kayo dyan. Barracks, evacuation, a model evacuation center. Tap, anyway, pwede naman, pwede naman natin gamitin siguro yun for our uh, Navy personnel. Eh. E, 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 pag hindi siya ginagamit for evacuation, ano, gawin nyo ng model training or seminar site po yan. So I hope, I hope doon po sa projects for that, uh, for that area, which is a possible evacuation center, buhusan nyo po ng mga infra on connected with evacuation, evacuating 200,000 people. Or let us say, hindi lahat yun. Let us say, it must at least accommodate 20,000 people. Sana, Secretary, ganon. 200,000 people lang nandun, ang possible uh, affected. Oh, da dapat naman yung area na yun. 10%, 20,000 in uh, accommodation. Dapat kaya, physically, kaya. I mean... Yes, yes sir. Actually, sir, kasama po yun sa ano po namin. In fact, yung ano po, kaya po natin kami ng Osias para mapalalayman po yun. Para, ang ano po kasi natin kami sa Camilo Osias, if we will have to prepare for the evacuation, yun po kasi ang pinakamali, ma, ma, mabilis na turnaround for our ships and all. Also, sa Lalo Airport, there's turnaround for, no, for, for the aircraft evacuation. Uh, included po yun kasi meron po tayo mga sa modernization din natin, mga tinatawag natin mga field tents na meron po silang pwedeng ma-pagano ma, 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 po. Ka even yung open area, kaya po muna yung for the meantime na ano po yun. And then, uh, At tents ang nasa, mind, nasa isip nyo? Yes, yes. So, yes, yes saan, actually, kaya actually, sana nga, pagkasama na nga sa proposed project sana, since yan ang possible use niya, kawal nyo na ng ano, uh, evacuation center, uh, dorm type, yes. dorm dormitory, barracks, hindi lang yung parang mess hall. Uh, yes, yan yung closest doon, pero I I'm sure hindi maka-accommodate doon. And with thousands of people in mind. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Not, not 200,000, but at least thousands of people in yes, mind. Yes, uh, kasi, ano naman yan, ano? pasok and then siguro uh, lalabas na, pauwi na sila sa kanilang uh, lugar. So just a, that's, that's just a suggestion, sir, just to be really consistent with our rationale. No? Yes, sir. We will, yes, sir. We will do that. So, Thank you for uh, listening, uh, General. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's a serious concern given that both Batanes and Cagayan uh, have said that they are completely unprepared without a single bomb shelter, without an underground camp, with no dorms or other facilities. It's a really chaotic state of affairs. However, I did not intend for this to be a grilling of only three men. And uh, certainly we invited other resource persons. May I call, therefore, upon uh, the private sector firstly who are here um, uh, and uh, perhaps they can uh, give us uh, some uh, input as well. We have Dr. Melissa Hubahi Bloha from uh, um, uh, the private sector. We also have Rear Admiral Romel Jude Ong, AFP retired. Perhaps you'd like to add something to the discussion. Yes, Dr. Loha, please. Good morning, Your Honours. Thank you for this opportunity. I would like to respond to two points that were raised during the proceedings. First, the use of EDCA sites by the United States and the capacity of the Philippines to prevent the United States from using EDCA sites to launch an attack, a counterattack, or a preemptive attack on Taiwan against China. Second, the use of EDCA facilities or U.S. vessels and aircraft for purposes of evacuation of OFW, Filipino OFWs in Taiwan in the event of a civil war in Taiwan involving China and Taiwan or an international armed conflict involving China, Taiwan, the United States and other allies. I, I'd respond to the first one. I would say that the approach of an American vessel or aircraft towards Taiwan, even if it's for the purposes of evacuating OFWs, would call an offensive attack on that vessel or aircraft by China. I think that they would be 
targeted rather than allowed to evacuate our OFWs. And therefore, in the course of using EDCA for purposes of evacuation, our OFWs might be endangered rather than rescued. Responding to the second point, I would like to refer back to Lim versus Executive Secretary, where the Supreme Court en banc interpreted MDT, VFA, and EDCA in relation to the UN Charter and the Philippine Constitution. And the Supreme Court, in a lengthy paragraph, explained that at no point that should EDCA, MDT, or VFA be used for purposes of an offensive attack. Therefore, there should be no um, there should be no doubt at all on whether the United States can be allowed by the Philippines to either use an equipment or a material situated in an EDCA site for purposes of an offensive attack in Taiwan, either against Taiwan or against China. Um, even if these materials are inside Philippine territory. Unfortunately, Article 4 of EDCA provides that only the United States has a right to use and dispose or remove these materials. We have no control on whether the United States can deploy its equipment, its materials, its aircraft, etc., for purposes of an attack on Taiwan against China. And therefore, even if we say to the United States that no, we do not agree that you can use EDCA sites for that purpose. There is nothing that can be done by the Philippines under Article 4 of the present EDCA. Finally, EDCA Article 4 does not allow the Philippines to inspect materials, the type of materials that are entering our territory. We can only be notified as to the quantity and delivery schedules. There is no provision as to the type of materials, and this is in contrast to the provisions of the military cooperation agreements of the United States with Australia, Poland, and Bulgaria, which expressly provides that the host government may inspect and uh, give, provide a survey of the types of materials that will be introduced by the, the United States into their territory. At the same time, under the Australian agreement, they may object. In addition, the Australian parliament may adopt legislations in the future banning the intro introduction of specific types of weapons into Australian territory, and the United States have the obligation to comply with those particular provisions. And therefore, in the negotiations on, of EDCA, it is hoped that some provision would be introduced into Article 4, guaranteeing a right to, to the Philippines to inspect the type of weapons that will be prepositioned, as well as to object to certain types of weapons. Thank you for the opportunity. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Loha. That gives us a well-balanced and rounded view of the issues. We call on uh, Rear Admiral Ong if he would like to add. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good afternoon. The policy discourse on EDCA has somehow added Taiwan to the mix. First off, EDCA should not have any bearing on the domestic affairs of Taiwan, nor should it be intended to insinuate our country in the ongoing disagreement with the Chinese Communist Party and the Taiwanese leadership. No less than our president, our commander-in-chief understood the geographical, geopolitical circumstances that we face. The curse of geography compels us to get over our self-imposed strategic blindness and accept realistic possibilities. Strategic deterrence through proactive defense posture prevents conflict, not start one. We cannot simply rely on the good graces of the Chinese Communist Party and Xi Jinping. The lessons from Panatak and Ayung and Shou is clear. The CCP's idea of peace and amity among its neighbors is through the barrel of a gun. EDCA sites in Cagayan and Isabela complements the increased deployment of the Philippine Marine Corps, which has been ongoing the past few years. Precisely in recognition of the need to deter the Chinese Communist Party from establishing foothold in that area using the Belt and Road Initiative as legal cover. 
Thank you. It's uh, uh, I'll just call it up. Sorry, ma'am. Serka is not a silver bullet to our situation, but it is a component to collective security and shared responsibility in deterring the maritime ambition of the Chinese Communist Party. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much, um, uh, Rear Admiral Ong. Um, we now call on uh, the National Security Council. I think uh, DDG Eriko is here. Is there anything you would like to add? Nothing more, ma'am. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, OSG is here. ASG Gilbert Medrano has been patiently waiting. Is there anything you can add to our discussion or confusion, as the case may be? Thank, thank you very much, Madam Chair, uh, Your Honors. Uh, good day to everyone. Um, just just a few uh, legal points, Your Honors. Um, as you very well know, the OSG, uh, if I may describe our office, is uh, the litigation arm of the Republic of the Philippines. So we are best described as reactionary in a way. But uh, we, we would like to, through, uh, through myself, we would like to express our gratitude for allowing us to participate in these proceedings, Your Honors. Um, as correctly stated earlier by Dr. Aloha, Your Honors, we have at least three Supreme Court jurisprudence as regards uh, this subject matter. We have the Lim case, we have the Bayan Muna case, and we also have the Sagisad case. Uh, these particular cases pertain to uh, various interpretations as regards on how to best um, tackle, discuss, and decide uh, matters pertaining to our and I would like to emphasize this, Your Honors, mutual defense. So this particular three cases, Your Honors, center or focus on mutual defense. Uh, having said that, Your Honors, our office also would like to mention that any possible confusion as regards the uh, mutual defense or what constitutes mutual defense, so we should be guided by the MDT, the BFA, and the EDCA, and likewise the three jurisprudence. But I would like to further mention, Your Honors, that under the EDCA, Article 10, uh, Sections 1 and 2, the EDCA particularly mentions impl implementing arrangements. So the Republic, Your Honors, is not really um, tied in a negative sense. If we are able to assert so-called government or national interest, in any form of implementing arrangement, we could at least assert uh, things and matters which are to the best interest of the Republic. That would be all your honors. Yes, thank you very much. And like Dr. Loha and uh, Admiral Ong and uh, DDG Erico, I invite the ASG, if necessary, to provide uh, a position paper on uh, the same. We'd like to call on um, the Department of Justice, Attorney, Attorney Dennis Chan um, appears to be here. Yes, good, good afternoon. Yes, uh, would you like to add uh, to the discussion? Uh, Otherwise, um, feel free to provide a position paper from the DOJ. Uh, we will just provide a position paper, uh, Your Honor, for, for the consideration of this August body and uh, for any security concerns or diplomatic concerns, we defer to the DFA and to the DND. Yes, thank you very much. And Nika, I think, is also well represented by DDG Santos. Um, would you like to add something, sir? Or uh, there is also representation from the Philippine Coast Guard, the guys at the front line of the West Philippine Sea. Anything from uh, uh, Admiral Torre, please? Thank you, Madam Chair. We in the Philippine Coast Guard, ma'am, we will perform any tasks that will make me to us pertaining to this EDCA program. And we are very supportive. Thank you so much, ma'am. Yes, thank you very much. But I hear there were some uh, suggested uh, joint exercises and uh, trainings to be undertaken with the uh, People's Republic, uh, to which the DFA has not responded. Is that correct? Uh, I have no knowledge regarding that, Mamma Pila. We will find out, ma'am. 
Wala, nang balitaan ko lang uh, na nakapending yata kay Secretary Manalo yung uh, ibang uh, request na mag-joint exercise with China. Uh, Pinag-uusapan natin ang balikatan, ang EDCA, ang VFA at MDT. Di naman natin kaaway ang uh, China. Baka naman maganda rin gawin at uh, sumapi sa iba pang bansa. Na kung tutuusin, napakalapit sa atin. Um, yes, Sir, may I just contribute? Uh, regarding the, the Coast Guard, to Philippine Coast Guard to Chinese Coast Guard discussion map. Uh, this was discussed during the FMC and the BCM. And uh, the Philippine Coast Guard will be having a future high-level visit already to be hosted in Beijing by the Chinese. Lagay ko ang pakay natin, hindi lang high-level visit or 2 plus 2, although napakaganda nun, kundi talagang uh, magkaroon tayo ng joint exercises ng kanilang uh, Coast Guard, yung mga militia magkatipon-tipon, hindi lamang ng U.S., kundi yung iba pa nating mga kaibigan sa region, ang China, di naman natin kaaway yan. Kung tutuusin, andyan yung Japan, andyan yung uh, South Korea, yung ANSA, eh, ba't hindi natin sinasali? Yun lang sinasabi ko. Kasi ibang beses na. Ilang beses na kasi uh, nagkumbida sila, hindi naman natutuloy. Yun lang. Marites lang ako. <laughs> yes ma'am, may paparating ko po. Actually, uh... hindi, hindi, walang problema ko. Walang problema sa inyo. Ang problema sa DFA. Yes, so, no? <laughs> Madam Chair, uh, actually, again, it's a case of uh, a proposal on China, and we're open to having possible patrols with China. There's no problem with that, but it's again the we have to discuss the terms of reference. Pero and, tama yun, di ba? Yung logic uh, na yung uh, uh, claimants should patrol the areas they claim, right? So uh, yes, by uh, we uh, the have same not... logic. It would appear that claimants such as Vietnam and Indonesia and China would have primary rights over non-claimants to patrol the areas they claim to be theirs. Yes, Madam. In fact, uh, Madam Chair, uh, we are open to joint patrols with as many countries who wish to undertake them with us. And uh, China has proposed this. We have responded. But again, we will discuss the details. In fact, I will be meeting the the foreign minister of China, I'm quite sure uh, we will be uh, discussing this among many other issues. I also hope to uh, have discussions with Vietnam uh, later in August for the, yes. to explore possibilities. We've been use very, very keen, yes, Secretary Manalo. And uh, I think that will be one of the issues. In fact, the, so these are all, all uh, really uh, realistic possibilities. Uh, these are uh, realistic possibilities for the future. And I agree with you that it's important that uh, we try and engage as many countries in our region uh, to ensure that uh, we can also enhance our uh, interoperability with other countries as well. Thank you. Salamat. At uh, alam natin na wala naman tayong kaaway sa buong Barangay Asia. Eh, parang Barangay Watch lang yan, di ba? Kung mag-joint patrol lahat ng mga kapitbahay. Okay. And with that, I apologize. I failed to allow you to uh, present the PowerPoint because of the burning legal issues that we wanted handled. Perhaps uh, you could... Uh, Submit that in a hard copy or in a digital form. We will share it with the rest of our members. Secondly, uh, it is apparent that EDCA will now be rounding uh, up. And uh, we have the golden opportunity of renegotiating EDCA for next year. Perhaps it is time, as uh, cited many times, that we get better terms for Filipinos and sort out Oh, very, very. Sa Pilipinong Sundalo. Maraming salamat po. Thank you very much. And with that, we suspend the hearing of the Foreign Relations Committee on EDCAP.